my brother Giuseppe in the building. Hold on. All right, so let's wind it down. Let's wind it down. All right, cool, guys. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. All right, all right, all right. So let me bring this other profile on stage so that way we can get this recording and everything could get going in motion. Hey, man, today's going to be a good day. I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, we got some special guests in the building, and the topic right here is going to get good. It's going to get good. We got Miss Ann in the building. Let's bring her up to the stage. All right, so look. So today's conversation is predicated on understanding that there's a movement happening, right? Whether you feel it or not, I don't know if you put your hand to the floor uh, and you feel the movement coming or not, um, but affordable housing is a problem, uh, especially in this country, especially in this country, especially right now. Right. And how do we tackle it, right? Uh, we got some realtors on stage. We got some investors on stage. We got people in the market. We got agents on stage. When it comes I to hear, affordability when it of comes housing, to affordability of housing, is there any way that we can bring that is back? Is there any way that how we can we bring, bring affordable that back? housing back? How do we bring affordable housing back? Popcorn style. Anybody can chime off. Popcorn what do you style. Think? Anybody can chime off. What do y'all think? Hey, Louise. Hey, Louise. What's up, what's how up, are you? Miss Anna? What's up? What's up, Miss Anna? Well, I see you say tiny houses and the huge benefits, and they are, but have you priced them lately? They are ridiculous. The The cost of them have gone up considerably in the last two years. Ooh, I ain't going to lie to you. I got the cheat code in the building. I got the cheat code in the building. I got the living cheat code. So, it's funny that you should say that, It's funny that you should say that, Anna. Uh, say because that, Anna. Uh, a couple uh, because of years ago. A couple um, of years ago. I had um, talked to a company called I had Tiny talked House to a company called Tiny House about Chattanooga. Getting involved about in the getting involved tiny house, in the Tiny House. And I mean, this was right. And I mean, this was maybe six or seven years ago. And they said, man, if you want houses uh, for at least fifty thousand uh, dollars, you're gonna have to order eight of them, right? And, and we gotta because it's, it's gonna cost us crazy amounts of material, and you gotta have this, and you gotta have the other thing. And I'm like, man, I gotta buy eight of them. So that means effectively, I would have to buy eh, about four hundred thousand dollars worth of tiny houses in order to get them. Jeremy, directly. Jeremy, my brother, I told him I got a cheat code in the building. How much are the tiny houses with your company, my brother? It's majestically fifty thousand dollars. Do I gotta buy nine of them? Do I gotta how, buy? How does nine that work them? out? How do how does that work out? Zero minimums and no cap on production uh, with my team in place. They're based out of San Antonio, Texas, and we make them out of forty foot shipping containers, so they're about three hundred forty square feet each. And the fifty thousand includes the amenities with the Murphy bed, the microwave, the, the shower, the bathroom, tiled if you want it. It can get very, very creative. And we also have cottages too. Nah, you know what they say, Jeremy. Nah, you know what they say, Jeremy. It, it sounds too good to be true. And when things are too good to be true, they usually are. Man, I, I don't believe it, man. What you talking about? You know, it's been, uh, it's amazing, man. It's where we've uh, we've built a, a, a rock star team. You know, one of the co-founders, that I, I came on board with Galvan Allen Holmes as the actual build team. And it's interesting because I've been uh, I've been working with another team over for the past two years, and they couldn't get their head out of their you know you know what. And after a while, you know they were starting out at like one hundred and fifty thousand. I'm like, dude, that's not affordable housing to a degree. You got to make sure that you really can get in there. And and that's where when you have the right when you have the right uh, the right partnerships and the supply and the material, and you have a team that's got over thirty years in the in experience in building HVAC engineering. Uh, design. I mean, you name it. It's it's makes the whole world difference, and that's what we put together a rockstar team to help serve not only uh, the United States but also Canada as well. Yo, so, yo, man. Uh, All right. So look, I, um, I don't know if you guys saw the article that was just recently published, right? Uh, so I pinned the link, right? So just so you guys can have a point of reference as we're talking, right. feel free to save the link, right? Because I'm gonna change it up pretty quickly. You guys know how we do in this room. Uh, we're gonna bring it back to this link, but I'm gonna let you know about a New York Post article that was just posted uh, as of May 11th. It says Goldman Sachs backed firms by entire Florida community for $45 million. They they bought an entire community for $45 million, right? That same uh, uh, backed firm uh, purchased 120 just a units week before that. Uh, just then a they week before that. And they then they went in and they purchased 87 single family in properties Brevard, in the uh, Brevard County uh, of uh, right. Southern Florida, they're, right? They're not doing this so they can fix and flip it. 
as you can tell uh, from the, the article, article that I'm going uh, to post and, above, and the article that I'm they're buying post above, this, so they're buying they this can, so that way they can rent it and turn this nation into a nation right. of renters, right? Uh, and here, he, here kind of brings the the point of today's conversation. If we if we do not choose to be homeowners, right, landlords, investors, if we don't choose to invest in ourselves, eventually we will only have the option to invest in other people. The option to invest in ourselves will essentially disappear. Uh, so that's the reason why we're having this conversation. I'm going to bring Miss Diana. I'm going to bring Miss Joanne up to the stage. If you guys have any questions throughout I'm gonna this conversation, to I'm going to invite you to do a couple of things, right? First and foremost, take stage, the opportunity man. to come on stage, It doesn't hurt man. nobody. It's not it costing you nobody. We don't got nothing to sell you. We don't got nothing to sell you But we do have a conversation. But we do have a conversation. The second thing, right? I'm going to ask you The second thing, I'm going to ask you guys, show some social digital currency, right? I want you to share this room out to the broader clubhouse community. So I want you to hit that share button. Put what's on your mind, right? Put what's on your mind, Do you think affordable housing is is, is, is even possible? Um, Is real estate a good time Uh, now to buy, right? Uh, Is tiny houses the way that you want to get into it? Um, Because I tell you, oftentimes you kind of hear me battling back and forth with Grant Cardone about the importance of home ownership, right? Whether it be a one to four family property, there's a way for you to make it doesn't have Right. It doesn't have to be just through your one door. Hit up Jeremy, you can clearly click that link hit up top, Jeremy, click and, that link up top and order yourself put it a at tiny the back house, of your house. Put it right? at the you back got all of your that house, backyard. Right? You got all that and start backyard. cash flowing and it start almost cash flowing instantaneously. It almost instantaneously. Now, I know what you're now, thinking. I know what y'all think. Keeps talking about $50, this guy keeps talking about fifty thousand dollar tiny houses, a hundred thousand dollar tiny. Who the hell can afford to just take fifty thousand dollars out of their pocket and put it on a tiny house, Jeremy? Is there a way to finance this? A hundred percent. And and that's what's amazing is that with, and that's where, you know, it's funny is that numbers are the universal language, the universal love language, sorry. And then that's where we have uh, financing uh, financing partners that we use and we actually have rates from 699% to all the way to 99%. Uh, and just, uh, they can go from 500 bucks a month to, you know, $1,000 a month in the payments. And of course, you know, Don Daniel, the Pill Method Trust, we always recommend his system on the back end of it so you can crunch that down even further uh, down to the, the span of the payments and, I mean, you know, just keep it rolling. And it's it's wild because you take that and, see, you know, you have an acre. You know, most folks have uh, a couple of different acres. Not everyone just has one. But, you know, just take the homestead property as an example. You add that to the backyard and, heck, you can move into the, you know, a two-bedroom, a three-bedroom, uh, three-bedroom, uh, one-bath uh, tiny home or we can make it into a two-bath wherever you want to. And you can rent out the homestead and pay your mortgage with it. And it makes entirely sense, entire, an entire amount of sense because many people are doing that. And there's so many different ways, but we'll dig into that. And so, yeah, you, the payments can range from 500 bucks to $1,000 a month. This depends on what you get approved for, which is the sliding scale, of course. But it's absolutely affordable. And you can also uh, bankroll it and you can really cash flow it and benefit even from the uh, increase in the property appreciate, appreciation because these are accessory dwelling units and it's also covered by your insurance. Todd, I saw you on Mike. What's up? Todd, I saw you on Mike. What's up? And then we go to Eric. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I'm here in Ohio. Uh, yes, I'm here in Ohio. I have uh, seven acres that I'm looking to uh, build some tiny homes on. So, looks like I'm in the right room. Definitely want to network and find some things out. Thank you. Well, Todd, um, shoot me back channel because we can brainstorm on what you want to do, whether it's from short-term rentals to even transitional living. Um, to corporate housing as well. There's a lot of unique ways that we can tie it into the seven acres. Um, I'm in talks with folks who have, you know, 15 to 30 to even 100 acres at right now um, all over. So there's a lot of things we can do with that. I will definitely follow up on that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You got it. Hey, man. Um, hey, man. He um, said he has seven acres. He said he has seven <laughs> acres. That sounds to me like a tiny house commute. Hmm. Let's talk hmm. about that. Let's what talk about that. that? What does that look like? Exactly. That's the plan. Tiny house. Well, well, Todd, let's have some fun, well, Todd, have some fun with the numbers. Um, do you have your calculator out? Uh, I, can pull it uh, I can pull it up right Hey, quick. I want everybody to pull out Hey, I want everybody to pull them out. I want everybody to pull them out. I want everybody to pull them out. Let's go. <laughs> I'm ready. This is where this is where numbers have fun. So we, let's just say we can act, you know, with, you know, one acre is about 20,000 square feet, right? And so these tiny homes, you know, say there's, we'll just use a one bedroom. You know, as a as a uh, as a unit, as far as like the control. 
So say you have 10 units on an acre, right? You want to have some good yardage. You have some good space in between. Well, we'll just, you know, where, where Lewis is at, the nightly rate for even a short-term rental. And I love using short-term rentals to guide. So this is where with short-term rentals, say you have people coming in for conferences, for events, whatever the case may be. You know, it's always a need. And so what happens is you have 10 units on an acre, right? And you have seven, okay? So we'll just use one for right now, and then you can you can multiply the numbers across. But say you have one bedroom or even a two bedroom. So the two bedroom can really, you know, fetch a higher rate. But we'll say one bedroom for right now. And it'll just say conservatively $200 a night, okay? And so you have 10 on one acre, right? And you rent them out at 200 bucks a night. That's $2,000 a night. Right. And would say you're say you do a terrible job and only book out half a month, right? Fifteen days. That's thirty thousand mm -hmm. per acre a month. A lot of money. It's a lot of money. And it's interesting. <laughs> and it's interesting even because at bedroom, even at a two bedroom, say you just hike it up to three hundred fifty a night. Makes sense. Couples, right? Um, or even one can double as an office. Whatever you like to do. Mm -hmm. And and what's interesting is that you do that, and then you know, say you know thirty thousand a month times seven. <clears throat> It gets, starts to grow real quick, and and that's on the low side, doing a bad job. And say you get it booked out for the full month, just double it. Oh yeah. Oh and yeah. What's, what's, and, and that's what's oh yeah. And, and that's what's unique about it because with the with the ability to even finance it, say you've got the ten acres or um, the, I'm sorry, ten acres, ten units on that one acre. Um, what happens is you know you've got maybe let's just say shoot it in the middle, say seven fifty a month per unit. That's seventy five hundred a month going out on payment plans. Uh, as far as that goes, and you're writing the rest out in cash flow. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I've also uh, spoken with the uh, the VA on the transitional housing, too. So that's also a great idea. <laughs> boy, hey, yeah. I kid you not, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, when it comes to the <laughs> transitional living. Mm -hmm. oops, yes. And yes. that's where, with the vets, I was talking to somebody yesterday that is planning to do something for uh, transitional living for vets, um, single moms, and single dads. To help them get back on their feet what we're doing right now the way we have that is we we get all the uh, the plots together as far as what you want to do we, we'll put them in buckets but we'll give you the, the design plan so you can take that to who you need to get approved for the grants and get us mm -hmm. exactly we're definitely on the same page definitely on the same page very fun Jeremy, very creative um, ways that we can did you say all right sorry there we go ahead bro go ahead there we go ahead bro go ahead yeah, can you guys hear me? Yeah. A thousand I have a red bar on my... We hear you loud and clear. Jeremy, um, you guys want to try? Oh, we got you robot style. Oh, we got you robot style. <laughs> um, I said you're in the design. No, no, we can't hear you. We can't nah, hear you. No, no, we can't yeah, hear you. We can't he, hear I you, think you said. I think you said that if we have the design, if we do the design. Yes, we do. If that's what you asked. Okay, so Eric. Okay, so hey, Eric, Eric you try to jump yeah, out of the room. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say that too. Troubleshoots that. Yeah, yeah. Definitely uh, try to jump out and jump back in. See if that uh, troubleshoots the app. Clubhouse has been acting a little funky for me this past week. Most definitely. <laughs> um, Most so definitely. Real quick, we, um, so real quick, before we go on to the next speaker to or, or we go on to the next moderator, I'll, um, I want to break this down a little further, right? Because I'm about breaking things down to the ridiculous sense. to make it make um, sense. It was um. There was uh, something in a private conversation that Jeremy and I had uh, just about a couple of days we ago uh, when we were talking about kind of planning out this room and making sure that we bring the most value. Right. Uh, he said, sorry about that. Um, um, he said that the financing options that they have is it a one year, a five year and a 10 year financing plan. Was that correct, Jeremy? No, it was a five. Oh, well, crap. Oh, it well, crap. All right. It gets even better. So, all right. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so we're looking at a 10-year so plan, plan, right? Or a 15-year plan, right? Or a 15-year right? um, plan. What's that month-to-month um, month payment, month on, these payment to on these tiny houses Let's, to finance them? Let's break that down real quick. Well, they can range from, well, they can range from a 699% uh, to a 9.99%. It just varies. And we have different partners that we collaborate with. And so we'll go through and, you know, they all have their different standards, but the minimum credit score is 600, 600. Um, so they can range from, you know, 500 bucks to you know, 2000 or so, but with the right business plan in place and the right model in place, it, it'll pay for itself. And, and that's, what's really cool about it. You know, you can really, when you have the right things in place to help make those monthly payments and it's not, it, 
that's not going to be anything compared to what's going to be coming in and the lives that are going to be changed. And so, yeah, they on a, uh, the 15 year plan, you, it's required that you have a homestead, but that is, you know, that's all in line with transitional living and other things as well. And you can really just, you, I mean, you could have one main house right now and you can have like five acres in the back and turn that into a tiny home village and just make that, you know, just transition that um, homestead into the main uh, um, office, you know, and convert it into that. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with it. And it's really unique because those, those payments are not, they're not going to be, of course, everyone's got their own scenario and everyone's got their own circumstances. So it's going it, to, it's just a very varying scale. It depends on uh, the person. Got it. Got it. Okay. So you got said it, anywhere got from it. Five, Okay. So you said anywhere uh, from 500 five, a month to a thousand, uh, 500 a got month it. to a thousand. Um, got it. So um, the reason, so the reason why I asked that question uh, is because I actually spoke to one of the companies that I do financing through. Um, and we have a financing option where there's no credit limit. <clears throat> wink, wink, <clears throat> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Okay. Okay. Give me that. Give me that. Said, give me that. Said, give me that. Hey. <laughs> well, and that's the thing too, man. Like anyone who has, like, we just have a, like some folks that we work with and I mean, we're always, you know, whoever, however you fund the deal, our payment plan, our structure is 50% down, 25% in the middle part of the build and 25% at the end. And we deliver it straight to whatever property or plot that you have. We have a loan officer team on staff. And so it's like, we, we work with, we work with people really where they're at and whatever challenges that they're facing because we'll, we'll serve as a quarterback and as far as zoning and making sure that you've got permits and stuff that are uh, designed that are correct because the last thing we want you to do is start the process and then not be ready for it because it's going to be it's going to be coming in hot like we we want to make sure that you, once it lands it gets connected right away you're good to go and you can start because it's completely turnkey there's no like you don't need to go back in there and go and you know adjust anything you can if you want to it's totally it's yours at that point but when it comes down to it arriving you can have it landed you know plug it in like febreze plug it in plug it in and be able to just get rolling and we'll even to take care of uh, pouring the concrete pad uh, as well which is a whole nother note and that's where uh, and that's where we just want to make everyone's life a whole lot easier uh, all right, so you, Eric, you back, bro? What's up, man? Man, I, I have oh, no clue. Better. Better. Um, Jeremy, um, so you, uh, I just got back to tell end of what you were saying. So you are a one-stop shop, design, build, and all that is in, incorporated into the price, right? Whether it's fifty thousand. Absolutely. And what's your highest? Um, what's your highest uh, uh, property or building? And what's the square footage? If you know those as far as the individual unit, as, uh, yes, just yes. To try to understand your question. So yeah. the, um, the shipping containers are forty foot long, eight and a half foot wide, and nine and a half foot tall, and we can stack them, and they're actually built to withstand hundred mile an hour winds. So if you have different properties you want to maybe build up with that, you can. And even too, we can customize it up to six bedrooms. So I mean, it can. I mean, heck, we can we can build you a hundred fifty thousand dollar tiny home. But out of the shipping containers, but that'll be come with a lot of customizations, and we actually have an off-grid option as well. We use the Bassett system uh, to help with making sure that we, with six to eight solar panels uh, as well. So we, I mean, we have an incredible amount of array of customization that can be done, and it's interesting because um, we have there's a big comp, there's a big name in the industry called Boxable. And uh, Luis, we'll get into that. I mean, you want to begin to that? Yeah, let's right break now? it down. Let's go. Yeah, let's, let's go. break let's it down. Let's go. Let's go. Let's swing. Yeah, like Boxable proved the demand, Eric. Like when it comes down to those who want a train, like a tiny home, like they proved it. Of course, they're like, piggybacking on Elon Musk's uh, branding. But one of the biggest things is they can only produce 3,600 units a year. Okay? And their the rumors are they're going to go public. You know, even if they go to three like three facilities, they're only going to uh, be able to produce about eleven thousand units a year, leaving them with a ninety thousand person wait list for about five to eight years to get caught up. Even if they get more investors on board, they really push it out. Their customizations are lacking. They're like a copy and paste model, and that's that's you know that's they're very upfront about that. We don't have a limitation on the customizations we can do. And we can really get creative with it to really meet the need for whatever communities we want to serve. And we have zero cap on production. We're processing, you know, you know, 60 to 100 units at a time right now and, and just cranking them out. And we have a three to four month turnaround time on the builds, whether it's one or 100. And we even have rush order on it to get even one off done in three weeks. So um, th that's that's one of my main my, my main points is the custom customization customization of it because a lot of them are cookie cutters and it's it's just when you're looking at a six acre 
10 acre development project. We are doing a um, we're doing one in Clarksville, Tennessee on four and a half acres, but it's going to be an Actually, apartment you know, complex. Do you know Ashley Christian up there in Clarksville? Ashley Christian. She's an EXP icon Christian. agent. Yeah, Christian yeah, Ashley. Yeah, I, I know her. She's a client, I know her, yes. she's a client yes. of mine um, and another, another venture, but she's a, she's a mutual friend. Yeah, she's a, <laughs> that's so funny. Then we have a mutual friend. She's a client <laughs> Yeah, uh, we back in the matrix, man. Say that last China, part. And we're doing a, a nice, huh? Back in the matrix. What'd you say? Back in the matrix. Say that last part of it again. It a little bit broke up. I just came from Clarksville. I just right came from Clarksville with, uh, from Clarksville with, with, with uh, hanging out with her for the weekend with my together out there. So, um, yeah, then we have the same, we have the same show people then um we would have to talk offline then um oh absolutely shoot me back to her husband hq barbershop i actually built their site <laughs> it's a very small world brother you got the one? <laughs> yes i put it on my i put it on my instagram page man that's a beautiful um barber shop i i love the concept oh man we, we we're gonna have to discuss some things but here's the thing i was gonna absolutely. tell you you were talking about uh, you were talking about um I think Walker. Uh, oh, Eric, you break it up. Heavy, Eric, bro. you break it. Up. I do. Uh, I do. I do. I do. Hold on, hold on, Eric. Uh, hold on, hold on, yeah, yeah. Eric. So, uh, do me a favor. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, do me a favor. Uh, can you hear me? You, you, no, no, you're, you're yeah. breaking up like like so bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we might man, have to, man, we might have to um, do a go for me for you. Eric. I don't. I don't know why. I just. <laughs> man, you need to go find me for your satellite. Maybe. I don't know. Are but, you, uh, so turn off. You, turn off your so Wi-Fi. Turn off. Turn off uh, your see Wi-Fi. If, see if you could turn uh, off your Wi-Fi. See if you could turn off your Wi-Fi and just run on your cellular. Because sometimes that gets it better. I just did that. I just did that. So maybe that's why you can hear me now. Yeah, yeah, oh, much better. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. You there? You there? Oh. oh. Okay, so uh, Eric will will swing right on back to you. Um, but clearly, um, Jeremy is vetted, right? <laughs> like he, you guys have friends in the same circles. He actually built that barbershop that she runs her spot out of. Um, oh, sorry, no, I really quick, I didn't build the that barbershop. Uh, I built his there. I built the oh, website. Got it, got it, got sorry, it. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Sorry. Yeah, no. So they're they're a mutual friend, but that barbershop, I actually was with them before they actually <laughs> built it and to how where the progression was and so i've been friends with them for about two years i ah, got it got it all right cool i ah, cool. got it got it so right, cool cool yeah i definitely won't take credit where credit's not good where it's not deserved I <laughs> yeah we appreciate you jeremy yeah we appreciate you jeremy thank you thank you um so with that being said right so we want to ping pong around the stage um there was a question asked in the back channel before we go to uh one of the other speakers on stage what's the perspective buyer demographic for small He's, homes this is this thing like for two adults, two kids, family, uh, or more in line of an adult or two? Um, so let's answer that question. Yeah, and I saw that that was Ben's question. That was a really good one, too, because there's a lot of – and that's a very broad question because there's a lot of people when it comes to even retirement options, those who are wanting to downsize and minimize, like minimize their living. A lot of folks are the nomads. A lot of them want to stay at a you know three-month stay somewhere and then go pick up and go somewhere else. Um, even if they have a family. So we can create it to where it's a uh, three bedroom, two bath, a tiny home, where it's spacious enough to where, you know, people don't feel like closed in or feel like it's, you know, it's it's a, a bad use of space, right? Because everything, when it, because my wife does interior design for a living. And one of the biggest things, you know, that we all know, especially in real estate, it's not the space, it's the utilization of the space, it's space optimization. And so that's where, when it comes to uh, the buyer demographics, I mean, they could be digital nomads. They could be uh, people who are wanting to not have to, I mean, not really have to buy a home, especially those who are um, killing their rent, uh, you know, and go back and live with mom or dad, the students, those, uh, those folks who are not wanting to rent and save money for their, improve their lifestyle. There's a lot of demographics that it goes into and kind of thinking back on um, what uh, Todd was saying earlier about the vets, those who are wanting to leg up, those who are not getting approved uh, through certain, um, certain institutions for their, uh, for a, uh, whatever they're they, for their VA loan or whatever the case may be, whatever they're having issues with. I mean, this is a wildly new play that not a new play, but a really a more abstract 
And so it really boils down to, I mean, they could be families that have uh, children that are, uh, that are business oriented, that are focused on traveling. Um, those who are wanting to downsize, those who are wanting to retire. Um, I've been talking with a lot of folks, <laughs> including um, you know, relatives and other folks that are here in town. My wife used to work in hospice before she did interior design. A lot of people don't want to put their their family member in a in a hospice because that's going to be like 15k a, a month. Yes, it, it takes care of like the food and the lodging and other stuff and the care. But a lot of times, people want to put that money back in their pocket and spend that time with their family member. No, you're absolutely no, right about that. You're chair. absolutely right about uh, that. Chair. And, you know, um, and you know what's funny? Like uh, while you were talking, there was also a person uh, in the back channel, Miss Precious. She said, "Team small home owner." I just bought my two bedroom, two bath, and I'm loving it so far. Uh, she says she used Bank of America to get the financing, um, and they actually had down payment assistance uh, for that as well, which is a huge bonus, right? Because uh, some people are asking, how do they finance this? Um, is it possible? And I see that she's out in Brooklyn. Um, as you guys know, affordable housing is hard to come by, regardless of where you are in the country. Um, and I and I saw somebody also wrote in the back channel about them instituting laws to kind of help uh, the affordable housing. But here's the thing. We have free market, fair market capitalism here, right? Um, it's essentially almost impossible for them to pass laws to bring hey, out- Lewis, afford- Oh, go ahead, Jeremy. Real quick too, something, Real quick too, something to tack on uh, with Ben's question. Section eight is a massive thing. Let's be real. Like I, um, one of the biggest heartbreaks that I have uh, when it comes to real estate is uh, when people go in and they buy up the land and they force people out and the vouchers they have are not valid in the next 45 days and most people don't accept them. That's a huge, huge sore spot that needs to be served. And of course, it's for those who are called to it. And just like transitional living. That's a massive, massive thing that if people can, who have a heart for those, for those folks, not just to you know stick up something that's going to just stuff people in a room or whatever, but have something that is nice, that is you know that is that is elegant, but it creates a whole different atmosphere to re-engineer their identity to help them not just stay there but also get back on their feet. Of course, you know with every demographic, there's pros and cons to, with everything, and that's just again it goes back to the, you being called to that that area. Uh, with with serving those folks, just like transitional living, and yeah, I went through a twelve step program, uh, in, uh, an outpatient program when I was seventeen, you know, and I saw the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I remember that to this day. And you know, I remember the intake, the outtake process, but just like with Section Eight, there's different, there's different things that you know, if you if you don't like working with folks in Section Eight, no big deal, no shame. That's okay, okay. I'd rather you not and not have to go through it and be the person that makes it fall, because at the end of the day. Just like transitional living, the operators that are on the property are the ones that are make it or break it. Because I've gone to I've gone to um, halfway houses, I've gone to different uh, I've gone to different transitional living homes. It looked pretty much like a crack house, and it was bad. And I mean, it was just it it was not healthy, and it didn't help them, and none of them were successful. Yeah, that's the and, and that's one of the biggest things that if you can create something in those er- those areas to help folks get back on their feet, it'll be wildly yeah. successful because these individual units. Instead of them having a room upstairs, what happens is they have their own individual actual home that allows them to feel like, man, I'm, I'm not being shoved in the corner. You know, I'm not just being overlooked. I'm actually being taken care of. And that's it's, it's a massive area. I just wanted to throw that in really quick. I forgot to mention that earlier. Jeremy, you know I mean? can, you, can, you, can, can you guys clear. hear me now? Crystal clear. Yes. Man, I hope this. <laughs> This Louise satellite stays in place, but anyway, um, Jeremy, that's the biggest. <laughs> yeah, Louis, come on, man. Um, Jeremy, that's the biggest issue. You touch on some things that I'm working on here in Houston. I think I don't know if you're in San Antonio or if you're a rep for the company in San Antonio, but uh, uh, the biggest thing I've seen uh, here is the housing. Did I hear that you said you were in San Antonio or you have you have um, projects over there? Eric, do you not like you? Eric, do you not, not like you? I don't know who you pissed off at Clubhouse. Eric, do you have T Mobile? Hey, wait a second. Hey, wait a second. T Actually, no, I don't. No. I, you know what? I yeah, do. That's I the only do. reason I'm <laughs> curious. <laughs> oh, my freaking God. You got Luis up the hook. Try He's giving you a hard time, Eric. <laughs> 
Try to change the audio quality. If you go up to the three dots at the top, try to change your auto quality down to low. Okay, Kristen, with the with the okay, life Kristen, hack. with I the with the life hack. I see you. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, uh, meanwhile, um, Blair, get Frederick. Thanks, get thanks for inviting me in the room, um, and thanks for back channeling me, Jeremy. I got a few questions, if you don't mind. Really, one question, and that would lead it, depending on how you answer that, that would lead into others. Um, for your tiny home built, just so I can understand, because I believe we're going to talk later. So this will kind of give you some food for thought in our conversation that we'll have, um, you know, off the clubhouse. But um, for the tiny homes, are you representing one company or are you more about financing or like, I'm just trying to understand what your role is. Well, I came on board with Galvan Allen Homes um, a while back and being able to, I, I only represent them. And so one of the biggest things is that I pull in my network and I make sure that people have their ducks in a row on this side of things. Because when it comes down to making sure that I hooked up with the right team, the, the right producers, the main, main, main thing is that be able to have the production to keep up. That's great. Because that's where I come in and make sure you have it, exactly everything you need in place so that way you don't step into any, any bear traps unknowingly. But also, too, to make sure that my team back there um, in San because in San Antonio, too, that we've, um, we've, I'll, because I want to circle back to what Eric was saying about the inner city side of stuff, because we've actually cleared the city, uh, inner city ordinances in San Antonio. So we've got some pretty cool possibilities there. But when it comes down to my role, I am here to help inspire, spread the awareness, but also to make sure that people have exactly what they need as far as the legalities, any kind of tools, right, uh, for any kind of business model that they want to uh, pursue. Because I've been in fractional business development for the past 10 years. You know, I own a couple of different companies when it comes to landscaping, e-learning, and also mental health. And so there's a lot of stuff that when it comes to that same passion pours right into the, uh, the affordable housing crisis and that help using tiny homes as a way to solve that problem. Okay. I okay. I understand. Uh, uh, and, and is this across America? Is there? Yeah. Are, are you, oh, yeah. Okay. So no matter where you're located, yeah, USA all and states? Canada. Oh, and Canada. Yeah, all USA and Canada, hundred percent. There's a massive need up in Canada right now that we're working on uh, with some folks that have a couple. Um, uh, they have a hundred acres, and they have also uh, some other projects as well. So we're definitely, uh, we're absolutely being able to serve the need up there and here in the nation as well. And that's one of the biggest things, being able to create an environment and atmosphere that's really suitable for your, uh, who you want to serve. Okay. Th here's, here's what I'll say then, and then you can keep this in mind and we'll, we can talk about it later. And I only reason I kind of wanted to butt in a little bit is because I got to roll real quick. Here's what my, my goal is, right? I'm a prepper. I'm trying to create a off grid uh, community, at least of 500 people. I want to have at least 10 lots. They're going to have to put up $50,000. This is a high-end community I'm looking to start. 50 times 100, that's $5 million. Plus, I want, I want to get investors involved because we want to have the clubhouse. We want to have absolutely every single amenity that you can think of. And we want to be completely self-sustainable. We're going to build this. I'm, I'm looking at a location outside of uh, Penn State University because Penn State University is one of the top agricultural colleges um in the world and so then we could bring in a nice um healthy group of um interns because we want to it's going to be a co-op co community where people can actually earn their living inside the community that's how self-sustainable i want to do and um so that's what i would want to talk to you about but here's the caveat and and, and i'll leave this up to you it has to be the homes have to be I'm not saying all of them, but the majority of the homes have to be on wheels. And there's a couple reasons why they need to be on wheels. No worries. Yeah, we, we can actually, uh, we actually have a model that's on wheels. So even too, we have the off-grid option um, using the solar panels and then being able to use the Bassett system. So we have that upgrade already. We can dig into those numbers uh, once we get connected and be able to really dig into how can we make it completely self-sustainable and even to like create um, eateries, even to because we have uh, commercial um, commercial designs as well. So if you want to make a barber shop, if you want to make a restaurant, a restaurant, if you want to make a uh, a tech center, you know, if you're like using you know you whatever you want to do as far as a cafe, right, a Wi-Fi cafe. Uh, there's so many different things that we could do with that and creating you know the centralized to uh, centralized uh, community. We're actually we're uh, working up a design right now for a 60 unit purchase order 
and we're uh, creating this as a rendering with a pool in the middle and really create the community feel and bring everyone together and be able to make that uh, make that absolutely possible. Thank you. And so I look forward to speaking to you later. And let me just land with this. And this would go to Lewis as well. Um, because I, because this is a major project, I'm also, like I said, I was looking for investors. So I don't know if you guys are hanging around a group of um you know, wealthier people who say, I want to have a bug out location. That's what we would call it in, in my business. Somewhere you would go and, and, you know, if that unthinkable event happens, that's what I'm trying to create. So if anybody knows of somebody, please back channel me. That would be interesting in that. And thank you guys so much. Jeremy, I'll talk to you later. Frederick, I would like to talk to you. Oh, sorry, Jeremy. I was just going to say, Frederick, I'd like to talk to you. I'm going to back channel you because I have a few people uh, in mind that might, I can make some introductions. That whole bug out Boom. thing is my, that's my jam right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I look forward to it. I don't think people realize, and I don't want to go off on this, but I, I think we know what times we're in and we're in a, in a position where we have to decide, you know, what kind of worlds we want to be around. And I just want to be in a community as I get older and start to worry about retirement that I'm in a community that's built with like-minded people. And to be honest with you, I, my home's paid off, right? And so I looked at I looked at if I would live to the age of my father, how much taxes I would pay in my home. I would pay almost $300,000 in taxes in an area that I don't even care that much about, to be honest with you. It ain't worth $300,000. <laughs> and so... Um, that's, that's one of the reasons why in Pennsylvania, having your home on wheels is a major, major tax break. And so, um, that's what we'll talk about later. And anybody who wants to back channel me, please do that. And God bless you all. Please be preppers. Three months of survival. That's all you have to do. It's very easy to do. God bless you. And just like that, we just connected a whole network. Bam! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Yo, I appreciate that. Yo, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you, uh, Frederick, for coming on stage and asking your questions. Um, just going to read out some of the back chat, uh, back chat uh, comments. You had me at Canada. Right? <laughs> so, Jeremy, that's that <laughs> Hi, that was me. <laughs> um, so, um, so, real quick, um, also, I wanted to make sure that we got to this specific question that was in the back channel as well. Uh, as you guys can see, right, we're ping ponging between on the stage, in the back <laughs> channel, <laughs> and making sure that we get to everybody. Uh, this is an extremely important question, so I want to get it out there to the broader community. Hello, I have a question. What about those homes? Uh, what about uh, those who are disabled? Can you accommodate their needs? Jeremy, what are your thoughts? Say that last, say it again one more yeah, time. For, uh, yeah, can, yeah can, for, these uh, can, can these tiny uh, houses, be, uh, whether they be um, uh, container homes the container homes or whether they be the tiny houses on wheels, uh, can those homes accommodate for those who uh, are uh, physically disabled? Oh, gosh, yeah. No, yeah, we can install guardrails and um, any handles in the shower if need be. We just have to make a note on that and just put it into the design. Absolutely. Yeah, any kind of like, any kind of like automated uh, stuff, I mean, uh, as far as like any kind of ramps or anything, we actually build a deck to some of the models and that's foldable on delivery. So you can just lay it down and we can actually build that to where it is a sloped ramp. And so that way it's much easier for access. Um, even too, as well, we're, um, we're working out a partnership with Vivint right now. And so there's a lot of cool stuff that we're doing. And so, yeah, we absolutely can make it where it's handicapped accessible and also too, to help with any kind of, um, any kind of safety, uh, safety features that need to be installed. All right, all right, amen. All right, I'm all right, amen. I'm happy that question was asked. We got my brother Anthony, we got my brother Anthony Glenn in the building. What's up, bro? What's up, Anthony? What's going on, fam? How y'all hey, doing? Man, we talking about these tiny hey, man. We talking about these tiny huge houses benefits. with you know what huge benefits. About? You know what I'm talking about, <laughs> Anthony? I know you all over. The Anthony, country, I know man. you all over we the country, talking... man. And we were talking about transitional housing, um, even. Uh, uh, additional benefits for those who are in the VA and want to make some additional cash flow for their properties. Uh, so I, I couldn't, I, I'd be crazy if I didn't add you to the panel for today because uh, I know how passionate you are about creating cash flow and creating affordable housing, especially for our veterans. Uh, so I had to have you in the room today, bro. Thank you for coming up. Outstanding, brother. You know, I'm always here to support you. And another thing, man, is like if you, I, I want to say this before, you know, any questions are asked, you know, to uh, to me 
or anybody else in the panel, Luis Australia is a advocate for those that um, people are not fighting for. So the beauty of that is that one thing I like about you, brother, and I know this is kind of funny or feel kind of weird is that, you know, what a lot of people don't understand is that it, whether you're buying a million dollar property or a $50,000 property, one thing that I know about you is that the customer service is still the same. And that $50,000 person is going to refer you more business in abundance than that million dollar person because there's less people buying million dollar homes. So I would just challenge people to not negate the people who can't buy right now, um, not tell them no, but tell them uh, when. You know, let's, you know, get a roadmap. Let's put you put you guys in the system to where we can get you where you want to be. And then, you know, once they get that house that they think they couldn't get, now that person is now a microphone to echo the, your, your customer outreach. So I, I really appreciate everything that you're doing in the community because people need to hear this. You know, I'm tired of hearing people saying, go out and buy a $50 million uh, apartment complex. And that's not where people are at. You know, let's let's get at the reachable goals first. Well, and you know what's funny, Anthony, is that I remember um, I, I remember sending a text to the other team I was going to come on board with and partner up with. And I told them, I said, hey, this would be a great, this is their exact words. I sent them a text. I said, this would be great for affordable housing um, if we can make it that play. And he, he said to me verbatim, I said, I, I don't think we can make it work at our price point. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I can't, I, I have worked with so many people who are seven, eight figure earners in the other areas. Uh, for the past 10 years, and I get tired of trying to serve the luxurious. I want to serve those who have been forgotten and those who feel like that are, that feel like others feel like they're a lost cause. And that's my calling. That, that is really, truly what I'm called to. And, and I mean, man, I, I appreciate you for saying that. Yeah, indeed. I love that, Jeremy. Um, it, it, you know, I think people remove the, the, the human factor in business. And that's why I like Luis and I support him because you know, you can hear the passion in his voice, man. I mean, it's real. He's like a mi megaphone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby, we got we got blessed with them lungs for a reason, right? So listen, um, so listen, guys, uh, we gonna we gonna spread the mic around. I know we had some people join us on stage. Shout out to the VIPs, man. That's everybody in the speaking lounge. Everybody that joined us on stage. Us being moderators, man, we host plenty of rooms all throughout Clubhouse. Uh, so we just appreciate you guys in the building. I want to give a huge shout out to the people who have shared the rooms. Ben, Joanna, Spencer, Ebony, Eric, Diana, Anna Abba DeMarco, Jeremy, and everybody else who's, who's actually shared the room out and spread that social digital currency. Shout out to each and every one of you. Uh, I'll continue to shout out and highlight those who spread some love because that's the Brooklyn way, baby. So we out here spreading some love. Um, <laughs> feel free to put anything you're learning out in the, into the hallways, right? Share the room, put out any gems that you've heard thus far and invite people to come oh, into the room. Um, shout out to everybody who's active in the chat chat as well man you guys are genuinely appreciated now to my speakers on stage uh we got diana dr barbecue lionel uh who wants to um mike this is popcorn style guys feel free to chime off any questions you got uh, dr barbecue what's up barbecue how y'all doing uh, just fyi i'm leaving the va now for one of my monthly appointments um, I do own land in unincorporated county in Ellis County in Texas, and I've been attempting to um, build a tiny home on that land for a little over six months now. And I'm finding that the financing options just aren't fitting uh, where we are at this time. Um, just a little background, the homestead that I do have has quite a bit of equity in it, and I'd like to, to take some of that equity out to, the, to uh, you know, get this process going for a tiny home. Uh, my ultimate goal is to have some form of workforce housing, is what it's called now, being in unincorporated county. Um, people are able to park, you know, commercial vehicles, trailers, and that type of thing in a secure location. Um, we are a bit off the beaten path uh, between Waxahachie and May Pearl in Texas. So I've been looking to get this thing going. Um, my wife is on board. She wants to pull a little money out of her um, her accounts, her retirement account. She has four jobs. She's an upper level degree. So we're looking to do something on our property. But uh, I hadn't been able to make headway. 
So what would you suggest with laying the foundation to the property, get get a better financing option, put the pipe in the plumbing? Dr. Barbecue. Dr. Barbecue. You said, what would we advise? What would we advise? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it real simple. Ready? 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 You, ready? 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 you got your paper and your pen? Yes, so sir. Go ahead. Good, because you don't need either. I want you to click the link. I want you to click the link up at the top of the room. Oh, my God. Hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I want you to a, go ahead, go ahead, Jeremy. Tell him, bro. Is, man. So, Doctor Barbecue, man. I, so, here's the thing. I was just like Bane was raised in darkness. I was raised in the trades growing up. And so, um, when you say workforce housing, man, and being able to give people a second chance, I kid you not. I partnered up with Job Impulse. Um, they've got offices in 66 countries, and one of the biggest things that is right now, they've actually made their own second chance uh, employment. And man, I'm telling you, when it comes down to creating a flight plan for them, for being able to, and you know what I mean by that, and that's where when it comes down to creating a flight plan for them to come into the program, teach them the life skills, and then create the opportunity for them to be able to go out and become a productive member of society. Like there's such a way, like you don't you don't need any like weird permits or anything like that. Of course, you need to make sure you have, you know, of course your entities and everything else lined up, which I, I'm, I'm assuming you do. When it comes down to when it comes down to setting things up as far as that program, the zoning and really the permits on your side is what we just need, needs to get squared away as far as commercial or other. And at the end of the day, we can actually, I mean, you can, well, because what we do as far as pouring the concrete pad, we coordinate with the contractor locally to simulate local jobs. And and so we've got when it comes down to when it comes down to creating that that as far as the actual the uh, the uh, in, like the um, the tangibles that are invisible so to speak. When it comes to being able to create that intake and that outtake, you can literally give them a unit, one per person, to help them feel like they have the ownership. You get the funding, that's yours. And heck, you can even create a lease to own type of program with that. It's happening up in Michigan right now. And it's one of those things where you can really create a huge pivot for them and be able to give them the opportunity to have that sense of ownership. And that's that's where we can really dig into that. Because, man, I'm telling you, when it comes down to giving people a second chance, like I'm working with uh, a guy that's here in Huntsville. I'm in Huntsville, Alabama. My team's in San Antonio, Texas. But um, when it comes down to here in Huntsville, I'm working with them, and even Job Impulse and other folks and other construction companies that are giving vets and other people a second chance to get back on their feet because no one else wants them. For whatever reason, no one else wants them. But I, I mean, when it comes down to really giving them life and breathing life into them and helping them understand how they could be by treating them as they should be, right? That's where it comes down to, that's where it comes down to you being able to have a program and have an operator on property. So that way that, that program doesn't die by the operator because that is the huge, huge drawback to programs like that. A lot of the operators they don't have a heart for that and they get irritated instead of going instead of celebrating these people they're tolerating them and that's where the the crux of it that's the invisible killer and so when it comes to building things out man i got your back on that and we can absolutely build it out to where any kind of customizations anything that you need as far as really dig it in i mean we can uh, we can create on the inside of it to where it's got an old rustic feel and it'd be able to you know for uh, for the old heads right coming in and a lot of them who are struggling they want to have that that man cave feel uh, even to create the uh, create a real feminine design on the other side of it for the ladies. It just depends on what you who you want it to really who you want to serve and really drill down exactly who that audience is. You know, back in marketing, right? We want to understand who it is the customer avatar. Who are we going to serve? What would help? And how what would help them really you know get back on their feet? Not just you know financially, physically, but also mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Dr. Bob, did that make sense, bro? Dr. Bob, did that make sense, bro? Yes, sir. It, it absolutely makes sense. So this is what I need you to so Can I get I need what county you were in again? I missed it. I heard that you're by Middle Lothian, but I didn't get the county. Ellis County. Ellis County. South of Dallas County. Ellis County. Okay. So in Ellis County, you're allowed to have two for each half an acre. So it will depend on the size of property that you have. 1.13 on one. And then I have another lot with 1.25, but it's a building restriction on that lot. It has to be 3,200 square feet, single family dwelling on that lot I just purchased behind the one I currently own. The one I'm mentioning now is my homestead, so I'm able to build on that lot, uh, tiny home. Okay, okay. And listen. Okay, okay. Uh, so and listen, real simple, um, right? so I'm going to make it real simple, right? 
So I got everybody and their mother calling me at the same time. Calling me at the same time. Simple. I'm going to make Guys, it real simple. We've Guys, we've attached uh, the link for Jeremy's website up top, right? As we're having these conversations, I want you to uh, book either a consultation or a call or start your application for that. And feel free to drop uh, um, the name Luis Estrella in there as your referral, right? <laughs> um and and book that consultation, right? The website is so transparent; it's it, like you can see through it. I'm just saying, um, it's up there, so that way you guys can book the call and move forward, right? At the end of the day, the goal of this conversation today is to create affordable housing. It's to create opportunities for those of you who are looking to get your dream home and still want to create cash flow. This is a way of you getting creative and doing that. For those of you who have been called to serve others and create affordable housing and transitional housing, um, either for Section 8 clients, like what was mentioned earlier, or just people uh, who are going through a tough time, right? This is an option for you to do that. And you don't have to kill yourself um, as far as paying on a month-to-month -month basis in order to make it work, right? We heard about financing options. Instead of you searching for financing options, there's financing options already built into the system. When you click to start your application, uh, I'm teaming up with Jeremy to give some additional financing opportunities. So there's no minimum credit score, right? The interest rates are, are still at about nine to 9.5%, uh, but that's the offset uh, the cost to actually do the financing for his company. Um, but again, right, it's to help you, right? Um, and if you guys have any questions, man, feel free to raise your hands, come up to the stage. We got more than an hour to kind of converse, to discuss, uh, to dialogue about this topic. Uh, so feel free to come on stage. Um, so Jonah, I, I saw that you on mic earlier. I want to give you an opportunity to talk. Uh, go ahead if you got any questions and then we'll go on to Ben. I don't have any questions. I, I've been working with Jeremy on a couple projects, so I'm familiar with Jeremy and I know that he knows his stuff and I know he can get financing because he's done two of my projects so far and we're working on a fourth. So he's the man to go to, guaranteed. Hey baby, let's go. Hey baby, let's we go. Got <laughs> we got that verification. Can I ask a question, please? Let's go, let's go. Uh, let's go. Uh, and then we'll go on to Ben because I saw him flashing on mic. Go ahead, brother. All right, so um, I guess the financing piece isn't my huge concern. I mean, that's awesome. I, I looked at uh, Jeremy and your website real quick and saw that your tiny homes are primarily the um, the container homes. Okay, so I live in Louisiana, and I've been slowly looking at, like, properties and trying to see, like, what our zoning laws and things are at. And what I'm finding, at least some of the areas that I look for property, the issue I'm running into is, um, like, I'm the I want the flexibility of the tiny homes, but they ours have to at least be, I think, a thousand square foot to not count as like there's different levels of tiny homes. Like I know I've heard about like the cottages or the true tiny home or whatnot. So running into that issue, making sure like whatever property I put um or, or home I put on the property is at least like that thousand square foot so so it can count as I guess possibly having a mortgage mortgage. Like I want the total flexibility of am I gonna maybe sell it? Am I going to do it as an Airbnb or have it rented out? So I've been running into that for a little bit of an issue. Then the second piece of just finding the good people to be able to help me through this process. Like I've, I've met and had a couple of realtors. I've talked to a couple of builders and I'm like seeming decades ahead of the game. Like people are just not doing that in this area. So they I look guess, at you like you have like four eyes, don't they? Exactly. And I'm like, oh, you're trying to do all this and make money? Like, yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm being pretty progressive. I'm not originally from the South. I'm from the Midwest. So like, I guess the things I've been trying to do down here are like light years ahead. So what advice would you give for, I guess, that piece, trying to find some good people, boots on ground to help you with the process? And then any other advice you can give on, I guess, like the zoning and, and things of that about what you do. Is it just only like the container homes or do you have any blueprints or help and support with if you want to build, for example, a foundational actual um, tiny home as well? Thank you so much. My name is Corey and I yield my mic. Corey, great questions too, because that's where we can actually customize them to where yeah, each, each container home is uh, 340 square feet. However, that's just a one bedroom. We can make them into a three bedroom and increase the square footage. Simple fix. And also to add them on wheels if need be, just depends on the ordinances there in that county. Because just because you're in Louisiana doesn't mean all the counties think alike, right? Lord Jesus, we know that. Um, but but that's where we go down and look at not just the county ordinances, but also what that land is zoned for and looking at what you want to do. 
And so, no, absolutely, man. And that's where um, we can 100% serve on that capacity. And that's where, especially with local contractors, we have a background in, I mean, really, truly with contractors. I mean, it is not a foreign language to us. So we can actually coordinate with them and make sure that if there's uh, concrete pads that need to be poured, we can handle that side of it and quarterback with you as far as zoning regulations, make sure you have all the things in place. And also too, online tools to help like with booking or whatever the, whatever you need. And there's a lot of stuff that goes into that, but it's really, um, I mean, honestly, we can really help in all those capacities, man. Just definitely back channel me and we can pick up that combo and really dig into the nitty gritty of it on, offline. Jeremy, I just want to bring up this example. So me and Jeremy worked on a project where the city said it had to be 1200 square feet for it to be able to be on the property. So, I mean, there's doors that you can put in. And then once the city's checked it, you can close those doors off. I'm just saying it might not be legit, but we've done it. Hey, if you've done it, that's not legit hey, to me. Hey, if you've done it, that's not <laughs> legit to me. <laughs> well, and, and that's the thing is that where when it comes to making sure things are inspected right, everything's good to go. I mean, we definitely want to make sure. I mean, there's different, there's also a lot of gray areas, but also too, when it comes down to making sure that you don't have anything that'll come back and bite you, that's the key. And so that's where, especially since they're considered an ADU, you know, accessory dwelling unit. Um, that's where we want to make sure that what your project is, Corey, like having whatever you need as far as like if you need a homestead um, property on that uh, on that exact plot, then what we want to make sure is you have that in place, because last thing I want you to do is start the build process and then find out the city doesn't want it. A thousand percent, man. A thousand percent, man. That's so true. Uh, ben, brother, you were asking some great questions in the back channel. I had to bring you up on stage. Ben, feel free to unmic, brother. What's going on? I appreciate you, uh, Luis. Respect, bro. Um, so the question that I had is, uh, the, you know, I'm, uh, please pardon my ignorance with, 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 uh, tiny homes, uh, up in this, up until this point, it's been just a buzzword for me. Uh, but I, but I did, um, I have been, I looked at your site, Jeremy, and I, and I'm actually interested. My question is, which you just literally just touched on, uh, was the difference, uh, between, uh, uh, a tiny home and an ADU, can a tiny home be an ADU or vice versa? No, that's what versa? it is. No, um, no, no. So a tiny home already is an ADU. It's under it that is classification. An okay. Yeah, it is under that category of an ADU. And that's why it works really well. People could throw them in their backyard, increase their property value just by you know having it there. Um, on your insurance, you have it in that category of an accessory dwelling unit, and then even to be able to, you know, rent it out if you want to. Or heck, some people are actually moving into the uh, ADU and renting their homestead out and paying their mortgage with it. <laughs> they can get really creative. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. So you can. Okay, cool, cool. I appreciate you. Not a problem, brother. Hey, Louis, this is Mitch. Can, yeah. I, can I offer one thing? I'm sorry. Go ahead, bro. Hey, so yeah, so just so uh, what, what essentially what I am doing is I'm getting ready to do a new construction build. Sorry, my son is snoring. But um, and then what the goal is, we're going to, we have a fifth wheel. So those of you not familiar with a fifth wheel, it's like a, it's like a, a, a trail, not really a trailer, a trailer home, but it has, it had it has wheels on it. So what we are doing is we are essentially rehabbing that, right? We got it, the whole thing out. And the goal is. Once we build on our land, we're going to essentially create another layer to the back of it where we can actually rent out or do a short term rental, whatever, you know, whatever it is we need to do with that fifth wheel. So it's kind of like a, a tiny home, except for essentially it has wheels. Of course, we're going to keep it stationary, keep it on the land. So that's just another option. If you guys Google like fifth wheels, you know, um, it's, it's pretty not too expensive. So that's another option I just kind of wanted to put out there for everyone as well. Well, hitting on that Mitch with about the fifth wheel, I mean, honestly, that's where the tiny homes that we build on wheels come into play. So we can actually offer that as a turnkey option and keep it within budget. So that way, heck, you can just offer that to your customers and even too, just to cut out the, cut the, cut out the, um, the blood, sweat and tears on it. And man, really, you know, capitalize on that, um, on the cash flow. When you say wheels, Jeremy, do you mean um, uh, literally you can you can tow uh, the home away yeah. somewhere else? Yeah, you can you can you can drop you can drag and drop it wherever you want to. 
like wheels, like tires. Makes um, so so one of, me, of the projects that me and <laughs> one of the projects that me and Jeremy's working on, in order for our client to keep her agriculture, she cannot do a foundation home. But Jeremy and I have come up, and Jeremy mostly did it. I just I'm just riding his shirt tails, but um he's gonna put them on wheels because she's allowed to have as many RVs or travel units that she wants she just can't have foundation without losing her agriculture so there is ways around it and because jeremy's been doing it for so long and the people he's involved with he knows how to work around the permitting and the issues that pop up and if he doesn't him and his team figure it out pretty quick i was just going to ask that question jeremy i know in our area like in louisiana where i'm at the modular homes are huge like they're everywhere um, very much more than they were up north where I'm from. So could you do this same, run this same play in some of those developments since they're going to be houses on wheels? Which oh, the dude, are. all day. All day, man. People are buying RV parks and slapping those things in there like nothing, like can't, like they're a vending machine. Awesome. And so, yeah, yeah, you can go and buy a mobile home park that someone may uh, just be exhausted, you know, maybe a distressed seller. I mean, go back to merger and acquisitions, right? When, it, when someone's just was aging out or someone's just exhausted with it or they don't have anybody to hand it off to and they're just tired of it. I mean, some folks get tired of the folks that are in the mobile home parks. I mean, that's just, I mean, not to, you know, to offend anybody, but that's just the truth. You know, some folks who just get irritated with people, you know, the best and uh, worst part of waking up in the morning is people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and that's what's amazing about it. You know, you can find a ton of folks that have already the existing model and the format and the land that you want and just acquire it and even to do seller financing, right? Yeah, especially when you bring up the model and hey, hey, here's what I'm uh, I'm going to I would love to acquire this from you and then we can I can pay you out of this every month and then I mean you just slide right on in and put your name on the deed. And I mean there's a lot of course there's a lot of steps in between that, but um but you, you understand what I'm saying. And that's where that's where it can get really really cool, really really quick because then you can even to create a uh, whole entire community around that a fishing community and use that even to, you know, as a, as a destination spot for other folks coming out of the state. Hey man. Um, so look, hey man. Um, so look, on to the next before question. we transition on to the next question, out, I want to give a I huge tell you this shout club would I tell you, this club would not still be going, um, still if, be it going. Um, if it wasn't for these uh, two doing, amazing women. Um, uh, actually, three. RB, um, the realtor, right? RB, Ms. Rashida, the realtor, right? Uh, Credit Goddess, Ms. Rosa uh, Lewis, Goddess, Ms. Rosa Lewis, and, Lord Lewis, Lewis, and Ms. Patrice uh, Bobo Miles. They're OG members. They're OG members, right? Literally, since day one, we've been rocking out, teaching the community. So I just had to pause real quick, give a huge shout out to those who supported me. Uh, from the very beginning, before I had let 10 followers, <laughs> let alone, let alone the people that I have, let alone the people that I have Lisa now. Miss Alisa also rocking with us from day, one. With us from day one, so shout out to you, Queen. Um, guys, this this club is supremely special to me, right? Uh, because I started it on the premise of how to get access people, to home ownership, how to get access to home ownership as for as possible. little money down as um, possible. This room today, um, kind, of this room full, today kind of brings it full circle for me. Let me tell um, you why. As that last um, question, as that last answer, question uh, session and answer uh, session just happened, I had like a huge bomb. I had like a drop in bomb head, drop right? in my head, right? Um, what prompted me to start the club, home. Everyone a Deserves by, a Home, by was a woman by, by the name of uh, Sandra Wallace. Uh, Sandra Wallace, who bought a property for $7,500 out of her bank account while she was homeless, she went, right? She went from homeless to homeless. While you guys were happy. While you guys were having that brief discourse just now, uh, and you talked about agricultural land, I, I had like a like a clue bomb go off in my poof, head. In my that head, said, yo, that I said, don't think yo, you, I don't think people realize that for no money out of pocket, zero you, money down, you can get USDA loan, right, and buy agricultural with USDA, land with a USDA loan, put zero percent down. And then go ahead and buy some of these modular homes build or out, tiny houses, and then your build SCR, it out, and then do your fix STR, flip. fix and flip, transitional house, whatever you decide to do with these tiny house communities that you can build that you on that zero. same property that you bought for zero money having down, instead of having to purchase it um, as far as uh, a, trailer park um, community. a trailer park community or anything like that. You can actually purchase land for zero money down. Uh, so um, I don't know why it was just like. But it was like like a mind-blowing moment for me. Um, so I hope to, you guys took a chance right, to click that 
right? Share, save it, share it out to the broader community. I'm gonna give a quick uh, a quick recap and a quick shout out to Miss Alicia, Art, Lotus, Anthony, Glenn, Monica, uh, Sejona, uh, Ben, sure. Joanna, Spencer, and everybody else who's gotten a chance to share the room out to the clubhouse community. Let's continue ping to ping some people, ping a friend to ping a friend, like my brother Jerry and Jonathan like to say thank all the you. time. Uh, thank you guys for joining us in the room. Uh, now back to the action, baby. Let's get to it. Let's get after it. Maddie, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. No, someone asked a question in the chat. Um, they said, I, uh, this is Monique Sherman. I just want to ask you for the room. Uh, she asked, uh, she's in San Francisco area, Bay area. San Francisco Bay area. Uh, she asked, can I build a tiny home in a friend's backyard and who owns it? Yes, you can. And you would own it, but you would have to come to an agreement with them. Kind of like the McDonald's play, uh, be able to, if they own the property, then you would have to negotiate with them something that would make sense. Um, you know, that you would, it would be your unit that you would own. However, you'd have to make sure that you have a contract in place, of course, to protect boundaries, uh, because, you know, money changes people and you want to make sure that your friend stays your friend. Uh, because if you go into business with them and the money starts flowing in, they're going to be like, dang, I want that too. I mean, heck, you could sell it to them too. You know, you say, okay, no problem. Here you go. Boom, done. And you do a markup on it, whatever you want to do, whatever you'd like to do. Absolutely. Um, but I would absolutely um, encourage you, Monique, to put a contract in place. So that way you can go ahead and protect your friendship. But also too, because, you know, contracts create boundaries and boundaries uh, protect relationships. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, Maddie, you've been on stage for a minute. Maddie, you got any you questions? You got any perspective that you want to share with the room? What's going on? Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Thank you for holding this room. I saw the title and I just had to be in here because I've been looking into tiny homes for the past three, four years. I've been looking into traditional tiny homes, shipping container homes, even school buses that you turn into homes and stuff like that. Um, and, um, f unfortunately for me, I just recently moved to Canada from the U S so my first question, like I said, on the chat, you had me at Canada because I was sitting in the audience until you said Canada. Then I was like, Oh, okay. I, now I can get up there and ask questions about what the process is in Canada, but also for the U S I would like to know what the process for somebody who is not a uh, physically in the US is as far as getting a tiny home. And also I wanted to know, I know I have a lot of questions, but do you ship internationally? And I, by internationally, I mean overseas. Yeah, and so I'll start with the last question. We don't ship over, um, overseas yet. Um, right now we're just United States and Canada for right now. And, um, but yeah, no, the biggest thing about the, uh, and I'll kind of circle back to what Ben was saying, asking earlier about the turnaround time of standard home builds and, and this build, our turnaround time, whether it's one or a hundred is three to four months on that turnaround time, but we can do a rush order is three weeks, but we just, we build it and we just, we ship it over, uh, of course, over the border. We make sure that with customs and everything is passed through and we, we just do the handoff and just, and then it goes straight to you. And so, um, yeah, it's very straightforward. There's not a lot of, um, not a lot of mystery to it. But of course, you know, with all the regulations and everything, we just gotta, we just with when we go over the border to, uh, to Canada, you know, we just, we're just make sure that we uh, get it straight to where your land or your plot is. And so we can dig into a lot of that offline too, but we, there's a lot of stuff that um, there, that's the same, whether it's the United States or if it's Canada, we just build it, make sure that, you know, with, uh, with any kind of issues as far as going over the border to Canada and coming back, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Cool. And, um, do you know what the cost would be feel would be for customs or is that included in the total cost? No, it, it's not included, but we can definitely look at that and I don't have, uh, I'll make sure I don't make a note of the customs cost because I will definitely have an answer for you when we talk because I don't have it off the top of my head. And I definitely will make sure I note that down. Well, thanks. You're welcome. Jeremy, are you using the HubBash program also for your tiny houses? You talking about HUD or you said hub? HUD Vash. No, I mean, that's where we partner up with folks who have opportunity zones and do using HUD funding. So we absolutely can work with HUD funding and make sure that we have what you need to get approved for it. Yo, Anthony, drop that gem, bro. What you mean HUD Vash? Tell the people, bro. Yeah, because I don't, yeah. Please fill me in, brother. Okay, so, so HUD Vash is a program. I'm going to read this, okay? And this is a lot of, for a lot of investors, this is something that you guys could look into. HUD Vash is a collaborative program which pairs HUD Housing Choice Voucher, rental assistance with VA case management, and supportive services for homeless veterans. Okay, these services are designed to help homeless veterans and their families find a sus and sustain permanent housing 
What what did I just say? What kind of housing? I'm you trying to answer. Permanent. Say it again. Permanent, baby. Permanent, baby. Permanent housing and access, the health care, mental health treatment, substance use counseling, and other supportive necessary to help them in their recovery process and with their ability to maintain housing in the community. Now, why am I telling you guys about this? If you're trying to be an investor, okay, everybody's talking about Section 8, right? People will go to Section 8 route and don't even know about the HUD-VASH program. The difference with the HUD-VASH program is that they have uh, uh, subsidized stuff that will help you pay for the utilities and everything else. So your electrical, your water, your your sewer, your um, you, you know your your cable, all of that stuff, they have stipends for that to get the uh, to get paid for that stuff. So you you can have a, a property uh, completely free and clear that is with this voucher, and it increases with the uh, it increases with the um, with the whole housing, you know, with, with inflation. So if rent goes up, then whatever the fair market rent is in that area, you're always going to get your rent. This is, it's called H-U-D-V-A-S-H, HUD VASH. All you got to do is fill out the paperwork, get with a case manager, they'll come inspect the house. And it, you don't even have to, once you put that tenant in there, they get the, they, they get the voucher, you get paid. Anthony, yeah, with Anthony, that though. My only, my only question is why haven't we talked sooner? Like, <laughs> that's awesome, man. Anthony, I was going to ask with that, I'm assuming, though, just like you mentioned, with any of those programs, you have to have everything up and running, though, first before you apply, correct? You couldn't do it as you're right. So if you have a house, promotion. if you have a house, this is how easy it is. You have a house, right? So for those of you who have houses that you're not getting the rent for, uh, register it for HUD Vash. It's just that simple. Go to your local uh, authority and then they'll place a veteran for you. And these people are not these. These are young people that get the voucher. I had a uh, I have a kid right now that's uh, uh, 26 years old, U.S. Marine. Um, he applied for the HUD bash and then he got the property. There's nothing wrong with him. He's not a drug. He's not on drugs. You can't be a pedophile or anything like that. And these are people that are not on drugs. They're just having an issue transitioning. So it's not just for. When it says homeless vets, people think a veteran that went to combat and all of that stuff. These are actually veterans that are getting out of the military that don't have a job. That's it. Awesome. Thank you, Anthony. Jeremy, can I ask one additional question? You made me think of a couple of things. I'm assuming with the tiny home, if we were to get one through you, since it is a um, potentially could be on the wheels, could you also potentially take it off of the wheels eventually? Because I think that gives you a great flexibility if you know you needed to move locations and then maybe put it somewhere permanent that's question number one and then two about financing i think from my area while i was told about like the thousand square foot areas because of like getting it as a mortgage to potentially sell it or whatnot so what are we looking at with financing and like i guess the term is this a traditional mortgage that can be taken out potentially or what kind of financing um happens with the tiny homes that you sell yeah, that's a loaded question too, because when it comes down to the, um, when it comes to the first part of your question about taking them off the wheels, we wouldn't be able to do that once it's on property because that's that's the termination of what our, our contract, um, but we can definitely help with uh, coordinating, you know, any kind of stuff that you may need uh, to be able to remove them. And we can talk about that offline because that's the first time we've actually had that question. And so I will, I'm going to make a note of that. Because and I love these questions too that I'll have answers to because I, it gives me stuff to go back to the team and I can get that for you and that's another reason just to back channel me on it. Um, yeah, and the reason why and the reason why I asked that question real quick, Jeremy. The reason why I thought about that question because I thought of the complete flexibility of being able to use it at, like in a trailer park home or something like that. But then if a situation were potentially to go sour, um, yeah, you could possibly look for another trailer park home. But then what if at that point some property opened up and you're like, oh, forget it, I'm gonna transition this unit to a property and put it there. That's why I asked that question. Yeah, no worries at all. And that's where, and that's why it's really cool because there's a lot of, um, you can absolutely transition it. It's just a matter of ha like having a crane, right? right? Um, having something that's there to be able to lift it up, take the wheels off, but also to make sure you have like, if you're gonna turn it over to a uh, permanent residence, uh, then that's where we have the concrete pad that you, that you need to be laid. And I'll actually, I'm gonna um, touch on someone else's question too to, uh, to loop it in. Um, Anna uh, had asked about the sewer. And so that's where in the plumbing, you just have to make sure that that plot is, you know, uh, perked with, you know, uh, whether it's septic or sewage, electric and water. And so that way you can have that there. And even too, to be able to, 
just to make sure it's a within code. And so that's where we'll, we can even to, you know, I'm here. So that's where if that transition does happen, then we can talk about that and get to the nitty gritty of it because I can help you coordinate with, uh, with folks that are contractors there uh, in place, but also too, we can work with you as far as quarterbacking that and be able to make sure that uh, whatever needs to be done can be done. And uh, there's no limit to what we can do. So we can definitely have that conversation, but that has definitely been the first time that's been asked. But thank you for the question though. That's really, really good. And then the second part of that question was about the financing piece. I think a lot of us oh, think yeah. the, the traditional mortgages, but what kind of financing happens with the tiny homes? So we have a five, 10 and 15 year plan, um, plans that are available just for the uh, existing partners that we have. And there's also, you know, like Luth Lewis, what he was talking about earlier, you can go to that and get even other folks to, to fund the deal. And our payment schedule is 50% down, 25% in the middle, and then 25% when we're complete. And so that way I, I will communicate with you throughout the entire build process, make sure that you know exactly everybody like on a real time update with what is happening. And you'll coordinate with the design team too, so that way you know exactly what you're getting, especially with uh, Lauren, who's on our team uh, through the financing side of it. And so we can look at how creative you wanna get, whether it's third party financing outside of us or even to, to be able to use the partners that we have in place. And that's where our rates start at yeah, on the five year. Uh, they start at 699 and then they go up to 999 all the way to 15 year. And so when it comes down to really what you get approved for on the financing side of it, you can fund the rest. So that way you don't have to come out of pocket. And of course, you just have to work the deal on the back end just to make sure that you're um, not cut out and also so you benefit as well you know, mutually. And so that's where it was. And you add it as far as a mortgage, the back end of it, it again goes back to how are you building your plot? Like because it is an ADU. You can easily start to you know, have that as for their, with the existing homestead to be able to include that, but also too when it comes to the other you know other you know build outs like an RV park and other stuff that's just that gets into the nitty gritty side of it to where we can look at who is who is funding it or who's giving you the loan or who's financing it on that side of it, and we can look at how that can play and how that we can slice that uh, slice that uh, well how we can skin that cat. Hey, we have me. Can you hear me? Jeremy, oh, can you man, hear me? You sound oh, crystal man. clear, Eric. You sound crystal clear, All right. Eric. Let's All right, Eric. Let's go. Go. Man, I thought I we lost you like Wilson from Castaway, man. <laughs> I, okay, I won't, I won't take, I won't take uh, too much of your time, Jeremy. I, I, I sent you my 10K card. I think there's a lot to be said about what you're offering, uh, especially to low income, VA, et cetera. Um, the biggest thing for me when it comes to financing, um, are you guys having a hard time getting comps? Because I think I love your in-house. I'm, I, I'm, I'm assuming I can call it in-house financing that would help with financing of the um, of the uh, ADUs or tiny homes, uh, because I, I I know that we would have issues with comps, correct? Or, or how how you guys? When you say, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. How do you guys alleviate that uh, when it comes to comps? Could you be comps a little bit more specific? On comps are comps. Okay. Yeah, yeah, comps are comparable yeah, yeah. market analysis. No, yeah, no, I know what they the are, but I'm saying, okay. but like with, with what you mean Talk when you comes to comps, comps, like what, like as far as well, the, if I go, the competitor side with, of it, the, like, yeah, if I go with, uh, if I go with the traditional finance, okay, and we do an appraisal and we're trying to find comparative Compa uh, comparables that go with your product, especially container bills, it'd be hard in a one mile radius, right? So how how do you guys uh, how do you guys deal with that? Or, or you guys know it's your product, you have your own financing. We know there's an upside to it, so the numbers will be there. But I'm just wondering, is that something that's that you guys hit a roadblock on? Because I know we will on on traditional financing or financing outside your financing. <clears throat> Well, and that's what's unique is that we when you partner up with uh, other folks too, um, you know, like Lewis uh, to do you know the outside financing on the um, on that side of it. But when it comes to the market yeah, rate, so, yeah, so I look at short term rentals. I look at your, what can we do your, as far as what you're pursuing. Like, like if it's going to be corporate housing um, right, or student because, housing, okay, you know, there's uh, other models. Forward that over to me. Like what are the going uh, so rates for that? We look at you, here's a square uh, footage per per unit. If you want to do a two bedroom, if you want to do a three bedroom or a one bedroom or even a studio, we look at what is the going rate for like apartments. Like we look at what would be the going rate for you know, a townhome. I mean, townhomes are wildly, you know, bigger space, but of course, but we look at what would be the market rate for, even if it's a short-term okay. rental. And so we look at how can that situate in that oh, community, in that area, and what can it pull, you know? And so that's oh, where we definitely work through as far as that side of the core, as a quarterbacking. And it really, that's what I meant earlier about, you know, making sure you don't step into any bear traps and look at what can be done. And even too, during the build process, I always encourage people Hey, look, this is going to be a three to four month turnaround time. So during that time, build a waiting list, market the darn thing, you know, actually get the demand out there, spread the buzz 
and even too in your existing network. There's a lot of things that can be done to really, um, really you know, build up the demand right away. So when it lands, you've got people in there right away. And so, so there's you, a lot of things that want to, go ahead. No, I have to cut you there because just in case my signal goes. So you guys are looking more in the income approach more than anything in terms of uh, rentals and, and, and so forth, not necessarily uh, home buyers buying these units. So you're looking more as an investment property type of um, both. No, I mean, I was talking to uh, several folks even uh, last week that you know, some of the homeowners that they want to add one to their backyard and, and you yeah. actually move into the tiny home and rent out their home, you know, and, yeah, and that's what's really rental, cool. But the they can. Is what? OK, OK. The rental piece is what? Well, but it's not just yeah, it's not just from the income side of it. You know, a lot of that is the big lure that a lot of folks are really looking at mm -hmm. diversifying and creating leverage in their own life. Um, but at the same time, some folks just want to move out of their home and stop having to clean the whole massive, you know, three bedroom, two bath that they have, um, wherever, however, however big it is, and minimize. Minimize. Some folks really do are looking to uh, become minimalistic on then their just lifestyle, so that way they can yeah. enjoy other aspects of life. Hey, time. Hi, Jeremy. Right. Can you hear me? Am I in the matrix? Can you back? Nope, you're good. Uh oh, your visitor. Is she a drop? Oh no. Uh, Jeremy, let's do this. I'll 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 call you later on this evening if you can leave me your number in the back channel or text me. Um, I know in the city of Houston they're they're becoming funny with uh, container bills, and I, I want to talk to you about that and see how you guys can get that uh, permitted and approved so we can do a lot of things. I think there's a lot to be said about opportunity zones here in Houston. And it's displacing yeah. a lot of people in our communities. And I think your plan really, really hits home with me. And so with my um, uh, uh, Opportunity Zone Fund, I, um, I just created it like, like two weeks ago. Um, I'm working with some investors where they don't want to wait for the 10 years and one day for their capital gains. So we're doing projects outside of the fund. And then when I get my capital gains, I put it into the fund and I, I invest in my own projects because I know, I know what I know in my city. And so I look forward to talking to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Luis. Now, I appreciate you, Eric, now, man. And I don't know, I don't know who you called for that cell phone service, but they got a lot better. <laughs> Shout out to you. Shout out. Um, but with that being said, I, uh, I'm gonna leave T-Mobile because uh, man, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, I, I, there was Jeremy, a question, I, I, was a question that was so asked in the back channel. We had so many people. I just want to make sure that we get to it. I just want to make sure that we get to it, man, because like I know, say. like they say, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So there was somebody that asked about the fine are there print, any right? Hidden costs? He said, "Are there any hidden right, costs?" Right, I saw that. <laughs> right, Let's right. No, no, no. Let's tackle that question. And I saw that too. I was actually, I couldn't wait to get to that one because that's the biggest thing: is that there's no surprises, no uh ohs. It's all straightforward. Like there, everything that when it comes to the design, any of the amenities, we go through every single layer of it. I mean, we'll dig down into whether you want butcher block on the kitchen top, you know, on the kitchen countertop. Hey, you want on? farm doors, or sliding doors, or even um, hidden doors, the right? You know, the uh, the um, the pocket doors. You go inside yeah, the wall. Like, so we will go cool, down through like, every single Mr. thing, Lewis, and that's what I meant by you know, when we start the build process. Or you are ERP, in communication uh, with our design uh, team. You know exactly to keep a pulse. Uh, so there's no surprises. There's no oh crap, we we underbid this type of deal. We've been doing this for a while, and that's where we have a productized uh, process because. We want to make sure that everyone yeah. has every single so, element so he, in their purview, in their perspective, like, oh, not, in, and not in the back mirror, you know, not in the rear view mirror, but in the front, right in front of the, in front of the windshield. Well, so that way they know exactly what they're getting themselves things, into and to the plan ahead. Yeah, that's, that's part of the biggest, biggest issue is that making that sure that, that, that you have everything in front of you. And that's why with this team, and I've heard up with them, and they are the absolute, I believe, the absolute best of what they do. And that's why. Uh, when it comes down to making sure you have everything in front of you every single step of the way, well, that's part of why I'm here. And that's why I want to make sure that that is absolutely yeah. clear. There's no hidden fees. I mean, the uh, delivery fee, and that's different. They can vary between five to 10000 or so. Okay. It just depends. But And that's you know, per unit. But that's well, call, the only additional fee as far as the delivery side of it. How soon can we get that out the uh, With that, and we go through all of that. It actually may come in under. So we have some that are you know, 48000 pop. Yeah, it varies. You know, so that's where we go through all of that. I make sure that everyone has exactly line item by line item detail of what they need to know. So that way, if any kind of things that may come up on their end, they can plan ahead for that. And that way, there's no, again, like there's no surprises and, and hidden bear traps. Hey, Jeremy, it's Dr. Hope. I got bumped off. Um, can hey you there. 
Hey, can you hear my for some reason I can't send your message to DM, DM you? Could you send me your information? Um in Sedona yes, you've got property where we're trying to build small houses on it. Um so could you please send me your information? I can't seem to get to your um message on my phone. No All right. And then the woman who was also talking about how government, could she contact me in the back channel as well for some of my clients? So yeah. That was very good information. Thank you very much. I am just wondering. Yeah, because my lawyer is waiting on the same thing. Yeah. She's waiting on the same thing, you know. And I guess you covered up sending it right now. I think Luis is on a phone call. What's up, Mr. Kirk? How you doing? Hey, what's going on, Jeremy? Yeah, I know. I got to get back to you, brother. <laughs> I wasn't going to say nothing. <laughs> That's why I said it first. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm a great room. Hey, RB, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. I hope to see you tomorrow, sir. Are you still in Florida? Are you going to be in New York for the event? Uh, I'm in I'm in New York. Yes, I should be able to make it tomorrow. I don't have the crumb snatcher. So I, should be. Okay. I just got my baby like sitting on deck. So, everybody, in case you didn't know, tomorrow there is a um, entrepreneur and networking event for all people in real estate. And all the entrepreneurs will be meeting up in Manhattan, um, 125 West 26th Street in the trendy area of Chelsea from 5 to 10 p.m. It'll be a social networking event so you can build business, do business card exchange and all that good stuff. Um, so if you guys are interested, then click the link in my bio. Let's quickly reset the room while he is on the phone. It is... Oh. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought he was on the phone. Okay. Um, go ahead, Lewis. <laughs> hey, got you, got you. Hey, got you, got you. Welcome, welcome, guys. Welcome, 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 guys, to the Everyone Deserves a Home Club. We have finally hit 11,000 members. <laughs> so shout out to each and every one of you who have supported us throughout this process. Um, guys, if you haven't done so already, you don't got to follow me. That's fine. Uh, but at least show some social digital currency to all my amazing moderators who continue to add value every single way they go. As you know, the people you follow curate your cl your clubhouse experience. Uh, so definitely feel free to follow these amazing moderators that are on stage. Um, you guys have been getting nonstop value from the time that we opened up uh, at 1059 today to about the minute that we close. You're going to continue to get value from these people. Uh, so feel free to give them a follow follow the club feel like i mentioned feel free to hallway. share this shout room out to the out hallway already shout out to the people that her, already have thank her you the room. thank you for uh, sharing real, the room uh real, uh real uh real gentlemen or real men get, get, get it uh get it done shout out to you jeremy alicia art everybody lotus and everybody room. else shout who shared the room shout out to each and every one of you um at we're, the end of the day we're here to give you opportunity if you haven't done so already Click that link pinned up at the top um, of the room. Schedule a consultation, uh, call, schedule with a consultation call with Jeremy. Feel referrals. free to shout us out um, as your because referrals. Um, because at the end of the day, it's about the beginning of the day. <laughs> and that's what we so setting you up for. So with that being said, let's get back to it. Uh, shout out to the, to the moderators who have joined us on stage. Bank, Doug, Barnes, Kirk the Bank, Shiloh. Barnes, Sh Drew, Shiloh. Shiloh, man. I don't know how big you are into the tiny house community. Like, Ooh, Shiloh's in the bro. house. Hey, the, the Burlow method, I think he's designed and made for this, designed, bro. What's up, Shiloh? Hey, man. We're actually getting ready to build a tiny house community Woo! in a Woo! little city in Arizona. And we're also going to be putting about four tiny houses on my properties in Costa Rica. Wepa! So we're, Wepa! we're all up in that. We're excited Ooh, about Costa Rica, it. boy, man. I'm telling you, that's a beautiful area down there, too. So I'm gonna need you to connect with our. So I'm gonna need you to connect with our with our in-house tiny house, house, connection, house, now. Tiny house I'm connection, connection now. I'm gonna need you to to tap in with Jeremy Shiloh. This Lewis, man, Lewis, man. that's 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 been done and done. Bro. Uh, me and Shiloh been on phone calls all last week, man. That dude is a mountain <laughs> mover, man. No, seriously, with his burlo. No, method, seriously, with his burlo method, you talk about affordable um, housing. I think that's, um, I think, I think that's, that's a that's so a connection I'm made in heaven, bro. So I'm happy um, to see that Dr. that happened. Um, Doctor Hope, Kelman, I see you on Kelman. mic. Feel free to ask, you your, question question you free to ask your question and thank you for being in the building. What's up? Oh, hey. How you doing, Doctor Hope? 
How you doing, uh, Dr. Hope? For, for uh, Jeremy, you got any questions for, for, for Jeremy or for the room? What's going on? Hold on. Problem. It sounded like Dr. No Hope problem. It sounded like Dr. Hope is getting her, 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 her early morning workout. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Come on. Talk to us. Oh, you can hear me? Oh, I'm off. Oh, I'm in Hawaii. It's early in the morning and I'm just uh, multitasking. You know, I'm going into Grant Cardone's um, summit on Friday on uh, 10X and uh, I really, my father was a great developer, and I think making these little tiny homes for people could be tremendously uh, uh, helpful. And uh, so uh, any of you guys who want to back channel me, I've um, been too um, vocal about COVID. So right now my clubhouse uh, back channels aren't working real well. So I'd like to talk with you. And uh, if anybody's going to the... Um, the Cardone Summit, uh, the 10X Virtual Summit on Friday. Back channel me as well, interested in building little tiny houses. Um, I have one uh, colleague who's got property ready to build in Sedona, so uh, look forward to hearing it uh, from many of you. And also the government program that the woman was talking about, um, if you could repeat that while I multitask here <laughs> this morning. Um, it's still quite early here in Hawaii. I'd like to hear that. Thank you. And I pass. Thank you. Hey, Dr. Hope, I went ahead and sent you my information so that way we can go ahead and connect so that way, um, even though my message wasn't working on your end. Thanks. Um, you Thanks. Um, you guys do this. How often do you do this room? Is this, uh, is this uh, something you Something you do regularly, or is this a new room? Yeah, so the club is actually yeah, so the club has actually been around for over a well, going on a year and a half. Oh my God, it sounds crazy to say that. Uh, but the club has been around. The club has been around for more than a year and a half. Uh, this specific room, uh, with reference to tiny houses, um, this is our very first room on tiny houses in the year and a half of content that we've created. Um, we were five days a week, three hours a day. Uh, we changed our model to one day a week, um, at least two hours a day when we host our class and that's on Wednesdays from 11 to 1 uh, but sometimes you know we hit that overtime button and we go a little bit over so uh, hopefully that answers your question Dr. O. But you know if you guys but, have But you know if you guys hey, Thank you very problem, much. Uh, if you no guys problem. have been enjoying, uh, if you guys have uh, been enjoying uh, the tiny uh, house uh, uh, conversation and you feel like back. we should uh, run it back, I want you to replay type replay in the chat. Type replay in the chat, for, replay a two, in the chat uh, for a part two, uh, and we will bring it back and, and do another one of these uh, conversations. Type, uh, type replay in the chat or replay. share the room so and type replay so we can run it back one time, so for, one back one time uh, for the with one time. That said, uh, with that being said, Malachi. shout out to Malachi uh, and Miss Paris Chanel for joining us in the room. Miss Paris Chanel, are you incorporating the tiny house model into your your uh, short term oh, rental uh, operating nice. business. That's my question to you. Hi. What's up? What's up? What's up, what's up? Everybody. Oh, I came right into it. Look, I came for the knowledge. You know what? I did a little bit of research. I seen this tiny house notification pop up. I said, let me hop in. I did a little bit of research, but I'm not sure. Um, you know, I think with the way the market is shifting, I think it's a great idea in certain areas. So I'm going to be honest with you. I did a little bit of research, but I'm interested to hear what some other people are thinking. Ah, okay, okay. Ah, uh -huh. so, okay, uh, okay. So uh, Kirk Bang Barnes, so, uh, Barnes on a phone call, but Drew, I know you're heavy into the STR and the short-term rental, rental operation operating business as well. What are your thoughts on, on kind of doing either container um, homes, um, which are sometimes stackable, especially in this case, uh, or the tiny house on wheels, as far as, uh, as, far as uh, instead of Turo money, getting some of these short-term rental money on wheels. What's up, Drew? Yeah, I think it's really for that. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, tiny homes is something that, you know, I'm looking into for, for myself and my business. Um, I think, you know, uh, people are looking for the experiences, right? So, you know, I came across um, tiny homes and container homes and I came across possible and um, I saw the price points and I'm like, hmm, this may be a potential, you know, move that will increase, you know, one, uh, revenue, but also the profit margins, right? You know, everybody knows, you know, everybody can 2x, 3x, you know, um, long term rents and the short term rental model. But I think, you know, going out into remote areas of the country, creating an experience with not only, you know, the accommodations, but also the local attractions around it uh, will definitely be a good strategy to do. So for me, 
you know, I'm looking for land where I can, you know, put a few tiny homes, you know, some yurts, you know, things like that. Um, so I can cater to the leisure travelers. Drew, sure, that's powerful, man. And that's what's like, I've been in rooms with you and I've heard your passion and what you have going on. You know, it's funny with Boxable, it's actually, they, man, they have, they have a waiting list of 90,000 people right now. And even if they go to three facilities after they go public, which is the rumor, um, they're still only going to make about 11,000 a year, leaving them a couple of years behind. And I'm putting, I'm being modest, probably, you know, if they don't get other facilities, I mean, it's probably going to be about you know, five to five, uh, over five years. But one of the biggest things is that they're limited on the customizations. We don't have a cap on the production. And it's wild. And um, but man, I can't wait to connect with you, dude, because I know that you've got a lot going on. And I definitely would love to brainstorm with you and just kind of just see where it goes. Yeah, for sure, Jeremy. So I connect. Wait, Jeremy. So you're telling wait, me. Wait, Jeremy. So you're telling me that Boxable isn't the knight in shining armor, armor that's going to take us out of a five million home shortage in the country? Is that what you're, telling, the me? Is that what you're telling me? Are they backlogged just the way the country, yeah, way the country is, bro? Uh, is that what you're telling me? It's ridiculous. They're backlogged more, worse than someone eating cheese for a week. Damn. Um, you know, it's, Damn. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like, talk about a four foot cork, right? But, um, but. <laughs> But like no joke though, they are backlogged on the production, and we are we are keeping up with the demand. That's where we come in, and that's what is it's just wild, especially with the customizations on it. Man, they're pretty much copy and paste, and it's um they've got their industry, they've got their land. It's very cool. But where we come in and where we differentiate is that we don't have a cap on the customizations we can do. And um, Lewis, I think I tagged you on an Instagram video of the one that's where it's like a beach feel, and then there's also stuff that's like a wooded uh, wooded vibe. And I mean, there's so many things we can do with it, and it's just it. And our price point, just like Boxable, is fifty thousand. Sometimes actually under it, and that's with amenities and customizations. Hey Jeremy, this is me. Hey Jeremy, this is me. I got a quick question. So I was looking at Boxable too as a as an option. But one of the issues I found was I'm in Florida, right? So we have a lot of hurricanes and things of that nature. Now, for your company, do you guys build, are you guys building it to code for that specific region? Or are you guys only authorized to build in specific regions? No, we're, we're, we have, uh, we can build up to code for any kind of a county ordinance or any kind of region. And so that's part of with one of the co-founders. He's an ex-engineer. And so he also has an HVAC background. He owns a solar company. And so uh, and, uh, the other co-founder has, has been building for over 20 years. And so we make sure that we coordinate with you as far as what is like what is required, just like what Shauna was or talking about earlier with the agricultural rights. So we want to make sure that depending on what's that zone for, what are the ordinance is, and make sure that even too, like is, is, is it allowed? You know, that's the biggest thing. You know, some, you know, some city co um, council members just don't like them. You know, it's kind of like Uber in the taxi industry almost. You know, some, uh, <laughs> some people don't like, some counties don't like them, some of them love them. Because it can bring income into the into the community in more ways than one, and so yeah, it's definitely we're not limited on where we can design them for and deliver them to. Uh, we just want to make sure that we coordinate with those who have those projects in place to make sure that we coordinate with them like a quarterback to make sure that what we're designing and what we're planning is going to be up to those codes and those ordinances. If I didn't answer your question, yeah, I was about to say, Mitch, that makes, yeah, that, say, Mitch, does that make sense? Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it didn't make sense. Yeah, because one of the issues I ran into is talking to the city. Anytime you mention, because I was looking at container homes too. Anytime you mention container or anything crazy to the city, it's oh, as yeah. if it, it it rings off alarms and the first their first option is no. So what I learned I is mean, you just have to... The first to, question you yeah. want to ask is like, who hurt you? You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I found a way around it is you never mention container. You just say, you just, you know, get the, get what the code is and then you just build it to whatever the specifications are for that specific city. But yeah, that, that no, you, you did answer my question. Okay. Cool. All right. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Hey, man. Awesome. Hey, man. We, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. No problem, go ahead, man. Uh, yeah, no problem, brother. Uh, brother uh, just huge shout out to my brother Omar for, for jumping in the room, value. man. His brother always especially adds value, especially in the real estate um, rooms that he hosts. But we're going to go to Ben. Um, we're going to go to, uh, ben. Uh, gonna go to Richard. And then feel free to go pop one and style. Go ahead, Ben. Go ahead. Do your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just had a real quick comment because it's interesting that you say that with Mitch's, you know, with what he was saying is that 
in Georgia, a lot of places, because I was looking into mobile part, uh, you know, development and acquisition and, and things of that nature, um, they don't really like that either. And I, when I say they, I mean, I, I guess I mean the city council folks, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm assuming that uh, uh, small houses are kind of, um, or tiny homes are kind of in the same wheelhouse um, as as the mobile, I, I'm I, you know the mobile and RV type of of homes, and so um, I, you know I, I guess hey, until um, they really permeate, because what what Jeremy is talking about is not what I had in mind, right? For a tiny home, I was thinking more like as I go through the website yeah. and I look and I'm hearing him talk about the amenities and how you can so build I would it. Have to call um, the it's it's um, you can just make it as where, you know where as along in the application uh, it, it's process. weird, but it, even House, though it's tiny, you, it can be uh, fairly upscale for, for uh, in, in design, and I think that that's uh, kind of where yeah, that's, um, that's the the uh, the the breaking point is between that and and RVs and, and things of that nature. So I just wanted to add to what Mitch was saying is that it's been my experience to hear. Uh, in Georgia, that when you start talking to folks about, hey, you know, I want to talk about RVs and develop, uh, you know, and or, you know, and, or mobile homes and this, eh, you, you don't really get all of the love. There's only, you know, there's specific areas and specific ways that you have to navigate those waters. So I was, I was just saying that uh, I guess tiny homes are the same. Yeah, no, that's actually absolutely the same. And some, that's what I was saying. Depending on um, what uh, county ordinances are, a lot of times in the inner city, like in the city limits, they don't like it. Um, we actually opened up, we, we talked with the mayor in San Antonio, and we really opened up the inner city there. And we're actually going to take that as a pilot to other cities to help really pave the way. Um, so, yeah, there's the, it just, it's really yeah. out in the rural areas and the county areas out in the country uh, is where it works yeah. the best. And it kind of goes back to what the other guy was saying, you know, create those getaways, create those experiences, um, especially when it comes to, that was Drew that was talking about that. And that's, that's the biggest thing, you know, making sure that you have yeah. everything in place, right, on, on the other side of what you're working with. To make sure that you are not going to step into any bear traps and it goes back to us working on designs and the ordinances and making sure that we have we're building it up to code so that way you're not uh, that way you're not stepping into something that not lewis is on the phone someone was out let's get in here does anybody else have any questions at all i was I'm jumping over to the chat right now to see if there's any questions so yeah. I just wanted to tell you that myself. Nah. I'm Don't everyone raise your hands all at once. Yeah. I, you, <laughs> I have a I question for you, Jeremy. So um, I'm in the commercial um, lending uh, space, right? So I get real estate um, investors um, funded. So um, for me, my business, um, I plan to leverage the products that I have access to. I have to and something that I'm running into exactly when it comes to, you know, tiny homes and, you know, homes that are on wheels, essentially, right? You know, those can be considered personal. Sales process itself takes um, now, from do you a have and a, half to two months um, anyway. a product, or um, can you so put, this, you know, these tiny is, homes on a foundation oh, no. where they can be considered, you know? Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, we okay. actually we have it built in to where we'll actually man, we can handle that side of the con laying the concrete yeah. pad, and actually make sure that the uh, the sewage, the water, and the electric are actually yeah. scoped properly. And we we coordinate with a local contractor there, but we've got you know our, on our trades side of stuff to where we come from. Um, we we know how to speak their language, cut through the bull crap, and cut through the uh, cut through the smoke, right? Because <laughs> a lot of times contractors are either backlogged uh, for for God knows whatever reason uh, these days, and I mean because they're, they're struggling to hire people, and that's that's a real problem in itself. But uh, we'll be able to cut through that and really help with manning that, and even to to help with um, even giving you the plans so that way. Then if you have relationships there locally, which I imagine you do. Uh, with what your with where your focus is because we can even just give the plan and say hey look make sure the pad is xyz measurement and then that way it's uh has these in place in these specific spots so that way with any kind of piping or any kind of uh, any kind of connection that need to be made it can be done and it's up to code awesome 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 now do you have any restrictions on location or are you across the u.s across the u.s and canada too cool 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 Okay. Um, Omar, I saw you on mic, brother. What's up? You got it, bro. I so hope everyone's doing well. If you guys have any questions, okay, jump cool. on in. Are we still popcorn it, style? All right. Yes, ma'am. Hello, everyone. I am Shalindra, and I'm super excited that this room popped up right 
after I finished meditation and prayer, because I was just talking to family members about doing my backyard with a tiny home. So I'm super excited. Um, so my question would be, I'm in the suburbs of Atlanta in a town called Woodstock, and I have a sizable backyard, but I do live in a planned community with an HOA. Um, is that something that you've ran into being a problem? Oh, yeah, I love HOAs. Like everyone loves Voldemort. Um, that's one of the biggest things we have to check with the HOA, HOA regulations and what they allow, mm -hmm. um, because some of them won't allow it, period. Um, mm -hmm. They, because of, you know, traffic or parking or just leaving something on the side of the street, they, they are very finicky. And mm -hmm. so that's where we have to really dig. I mean, really dig into what they're, what they allow, and what they don't allow and see okay. how we can position it and structure it. So that way we can have, um, make sure that not just getting approval on the front end, because the last thing you want to do is have them say, hey, you can't have that here after it's built type of mm -hmm. deal and have a teardown order. That's the last thing you want. Mm -hmm. And so we definitely dig into it on the front end of it. But HOAs are known to, I mean, I'm a landscaping company too. And so like I, I, I've rented the HOAs my entire life and I, um, whoa, gosh, man. <laughs> yeah, so they can, they, uh, you know what I mean? And so they can definitely be a butthead you know, at times and uh, absolutely be a stickler. So we definitely want to dig into that on the front end. We can just get up on a call and just dig through what they have allowed and what can be allowed um, because that's also too, you know, and, and what uh, they gave that to you when you moved in. And so that's where uh, we really, even too, they have a change of board members too, you know, that happens from time to time as well, even though some of them are like 75, 80 years old. Exactly. And what I've noticed that, <laughs> I've noticed that my HOA is not, super strict from what I can tell. I lived in the community for four years. Um, I also have um, inherited my mom's property from Coldwater, Mississippi. So I'm a Southern girl and uh, mm -hmm. well, Southern, Southern past Georgia. Um, so we have an acre and a half in Coldwater, Mississippi. We currently have a manufactured mobile home already there. I not knowing what you know, called and asked, you know, what would be the stipulations to add another home to that property? And I think they have now some type of stipulations um, to that. Um, I think I had it to I had to buy more land. Um, so I would mm -hmm. definitely also like to look into that address and what could possibly be possible since the mobile home is already there with its own uh, septic tank and sewer already installed. And last but not least, we Sweet. definitely got to get on the call. I have five acres in Tennessee. Um, what that, part? Um, it's outside of Carrierville, kind of in, I want to say, not Covington. It's outside of Car Carrierville, and I cannot think of the actual town right off the top of my head. Oh, you're, you're good. Uh, I lived in Murfreesboro, Nashville for six years, and, um, and so, or for five, about five years. And so... Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, Tennessee is like a second home, and it's definitely a different animal up in Tennessee. Yes, and I love Murfreesboro. Man. I go up there too because um, I have a. Uh, I'm invested in 100% chiropractic, and we have a, 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 a office up there that has grown leaps and bounds. But I want to say it's right outside of Carrierville. It's five acres um, that he purchased for like dirt cheap in 2011. And we've, as a family, been talking about all of us building out there, but no one has really hit the ball. And I think if I bring this ideal and plan to them, it will be great as well. So I have those three opportunities, but I would love to put something in my backyard and maximize oh, yeah. on, I have a five bedroom, three and a half bath, two story with a finished basement that I could live Only? back in the backyard and probably rent it out for like 25 a month. So we got to talk. You only I'm have five person. bedrooms. I just make sure I heard that right. You, know, you only have five bedrooms? <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> okay. So the six bedroom cannot be a bedroom because it doesn't have a window. It has a closet and no window. <laughs> no worries. No. I'm just messing with you because I'm like, oh, man, those are rookie numbers, man. You got to pump those up. <laughs> yeah. <That's awesome. laughs> but I purchased in 17, right before my husband passed away in 18, we purchased for two forty four nine with equity already built in and... I've been here since 2017 and I'm at 430 equity and a house across the street just sold cash for 575 and my house is bigger. So I need to do some upgrades, well, you, but I need the cash flow. No, I understand that. And that was actually, um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to grab Daniel's question to loop it in here to help with this conversation. Um, awesome. He asked, what is the process of prepping your land 
plumbing, electrical, and other, et cetera. And so that is where, you know, with when, uh, when you and I get on a call, uh, Daniel, to answer your question, what we do is we design it, we first come up with the designs, and then we make sure that with that process, once we start to build process, is when we start to coordinate and make sure that you have your land, uh, your land prepped and parked properly, uh, whether it's sewage or uh, a septic tank, electric and plumbing. And so it's very straightforward. And it's just like any other uh, land development. It's really just making sure that we have you have those scopes for the plot, for the plots of where they need to go. And yeah, you know, just it's very straightforward. It's very simple, very simple. Sounds awesome. I can't wait to speak with you. Thank you for your time. I am looking forward to it. All right, all right. Yeah, all Jeremy, right, all right. Down, Yo, bro, Jeremy, you've been holding it down, bro. I appreciate you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, it's been fun, man. I told you this is gonna be fun. It's like a venting session for me, man. Uh, <laughs> it feels good to get it out. <laughs> hey. Hey. Oh man, I'm getting back to back phone calls. This boy that has been because this boy that has been on um, fire. So with that being um, said, so with that we being said, we have been sharing. Sharing is on stage. Sharing. What questions you got for, for Jeremy and for the family? What's up? Hello, uh, my name is Sherry Shine, and I'm down here in Jacksonville, Florida, and. Um, we have two projects that we want to do with the containers. One of them is in Jacksonville, and we think that one's going to go pretty well because there are some container homes here in Jacksonville. But the second project is, is on um, some property that I own that's in a rural area about 30 miles outside of Jacksonville. And we, we have a company to write a letter to, um, to the city asking, you know, well, first of all, they, they reviewed uh, the requirements and they didn't see anything in the requirements that said that we couldn't have a container home. So they wrote a letter um, saying, OK, we don't see anything this, that says we can't do this. So are we missing anything? And the city has not even responded. They just kind of ignored us. So oh, don't, um, you, don't you love it when they take their sweet time? <laughs> Man, I swear, like so the city, the city, the county clerk, the DMV, all function on the same like project management software, um, like Morse code, I think. And um, you know, and that's one of the biggest things. Like, if any kind of delays or anything like that, that's where it's like, okay, let's go ground game. And who is the person that we need to get a hold of? Whose door do we need, need to go knock on? And, and that's where, um, you know, that's where we really, like, I really like to dig in with folks because. At the end of the day, if something's going to hold back from changing lives, then that, that's that's a problem for me. And that's where I really, when it comes down to getting in front of folks that actually like to, to get a response back, it's not just digging into the basic website, uh, like you know the website uh, you know, information that they have so scattered all over. Um, yeah, you know, I imagine that you know up there it's about the same down here in Alabama. You know, it'd probably take a year to get back to you for something that needed to be done last week. And uh, <laughs> you know, and that's where. Really uh, digging into how can like who do you know that can connect as a connection to them like using networking you know being able to really get in front of them it sounds a little bit obtuse and a little out there but really truly when it comes down to uh, the city ordinances and those who are over that area you know there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of relationships that still function in that arena as well and there's some politics that probably need to go on but really uh, really looking at you know making sure we have that response back in time for the build time. And if there's a delay in getting a response back from those who are over the authority in that area, uh, we'll actually delay it on our side. So that way we have, we can hold up stuff and make sure that their things are approved. So we definitely don't jump into it blindly. And we want to make sure that anyone that we work with is, is protected. They're, they're secured and they're not jumping into something that's going to backfire on them. Okay. Well, I, I messaged you in the back. So um, to make contact with you. Sounds like a plan. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, thank you so much. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy, Jeremy, you guys think you get your price structures back down a little bit to where you're back into uh, reason, reasonable and, and affordability on these? I'm not trying to point anything out. I'm just trying to ask questions. But because uh, you're right now between land acquisition and land structure and, and foundation structure and all that, you're up there with uh, – Medium ice cream, medium house prices. Doug, could you be a little bit more clear? I don't know. I know we talked on the phone, but our units are starting at like fifty thousand. So you may be thinking of somebody else, because we're not no, we're not going to acquire I mean, the land. Um, we're working with those who already have that and acting as a quarterback. I understand that. that. I'm, just about yeah. whole. I'm just talking about it as a whole. You're so I mean, you're at you're at about one hundred and eleven to one hundred and eighteen bucks a square foot right now, right? Yeah, the variance range is 
Yeah, they vary between, it just depends on the customization, but we'll go from you know, 50 bucks a square foot to 400 bucks a square foot. It just varies on what people want to do. Well, if it's 50,000, well, that's $111 a square foot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Standard wise, yeah, it's around there. But um, but when it comes well, to. Okay. Is it just me? Is it just me? Or is it, I feel like both of you guys are breaking up. Uh, Doug, you were saying, you were saying as far as the price per square foot. Go ahead, replay that. Uh, and then we'll have Jeremy respond. Go ahead. Uh, I think I'm in a shit area. I okay, got a red bar. Just heard you clear. Okay, well, we just heard you clear. I got a red. I got a red bar. I'm I'm fluctuating in and out, so I may lose you. No, I was just. I'm not saying anything negative towards you, Jeremy. I'm just asking: is it, is it possible that over time you guys are going to get your square foot footage cost? Because right now you're in medium price range square foot cost of just basically building a shed of minium. So in other words, the, the shed companies that are out there will do the same thing for around forty bucks a square foot. Can I chime in on this? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Malachi. And, yeah, go ahead, Malachi. And, and then I know well. Giuseppe ahead, wants to chime in as well. Go ahead, Malachi. Yeah, one thing you have to remember when you're looking at smaller units, there's a base cost that goes into people just coming out to do anything. So when you're looking at price per square foot amounts, the smaller the unit is, typically the higher that price uh, amount is going to be. So, for example, the units I build, you know, they're on the smaller side, like 13, 12, 13, between 1,200 and 1,400 square feet. Going up just 100 square feet dropped my price per square foot by like eight or nine bucks when you're talking about, you know, how small something is. So when you're looking at your numbers, you have to consider that. Well, and Doug, just kind of um, uh, to answer what you were saying. Yeah, as time goes on, I mean, we're always going to be building. So, you know, we, you know, as time grows, you know, we have more buying power and, you know, we're always going to look at finding ways to finding ways to bring the cost down, but not cut corners. Like that's the biggest thing. And so that's where, uh, you know, we want to make sure we preserve the quality assurance because we only use new containers. There's other container uh, companies that use, um, that use actually, uh, like actually like, uh, used containers. And so they only use those. That's why they were able to bring those down, but it also compromises the structural integrity of it a little bit too. And so that's where uh, making sure that we have uh, our, our, um, our, our bill price to come down uh, we have to definitely make sure that it's within the parameters of quality quality control for sure yeah i think that was a phenomenal point. yeah i think that was a phenomenal go point. ahead go ahead Doug. I, uh, I go, ahead, go ahead doug I, I think you wanted to chime in oh, man, i appreciate it i was just checking it out because we're always we're always looking for uh, ways to uh plant stuff on our lands yeah definitely man and if you guys don't haven't connected with doug yet seriously then <laughs> yeah doug are you still in florence uh, I'm in uh, Counts, Tennessee, but uh, an hour from Florence. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, this guy is a monster when it comes to real estate and properties. But yeah, he is definitely he is definitely a mover and a shaker, guys. Uh, just shot you a follow. Uh, just shot you a follow, Doug. Uh, so I appreciate you joining us on stage. Uh, with that being said, man, um, when you talk about affordability, right? Uh, Because I'm happy Doug brought that back up so we can swing back to this. Um, The financing options that uh, Jeremy has available and the financing options that we're going to equip him with um, make this completely affordable, right? And especially when you think, right, most people's mortgages are in the 1500 and up range, uh, whereas uh, these tiny house situations uh, or uh, whether they be the, the, the tiny house. The tiny house containers or the tiny house on wheels being offered at fifty thousand uh, dollars with a financing options of ten or fifteen with years a with a monthly payment of five hundred to a thousand dollars. That's far below what people uh, are paying uh, on a month to month basis for a standard uh, home, and right? The, uh, and we talk about creating cash flow options for you to either do a short term rental or long term rental the of the these spaces from the moment that you build, build them, them or you get them built for you uh, and putting them uh, to company or or to uh, to complement either the single family or multifamily property that you have in your home. There's nothing but space, time, and opportunity available for you through these given options, right? Most of the time, these tiny house companies or or these tiny house organizations that are selling these don't have financing in place. So they want you to have this lump sum of money that you either have to liquidate equity, uh, shake down mom and dad, uh, go rob a bank, wherever, uh, to source this information. 
education or to source the the financing options for it. Um, so I'm happy that Jeremy already has this built in uh, and his company is already uh, established. I like, um, uh, I like the ability um, to the ability to customize it, right? To stack these on one another or to stack them uh, side by you, side uh, to give you yourself even more square footage uh, or more more options, uh, more options as far as what you can recoup on a short-term rental or long-term rental basis. So huge shout out to Jeremy and, and, and this company uh, for coming, uh, coming on board and doing what you guys are doing. Uh, with that um, being said, Giuseppe, um, I know Giuseppe. I know that you operate a lot of um, long-term rentals and, and you're into the single family and multifamily okay. arena, uh, now getting into the commercial space. Uh, have you ever thought about uh, building either tiny house or, or um, container okay. homes outside of your uh, units or uh, accompanied with your units to increase your cash flow? I don't know if Giuseppe is there. Um, okay, so we're going to swing to Onaze. My brother uh, Onaze, have you uh, considered util utilizing tiny homes or container homes? Absolutely. I'm out <laughs> uh, eating lunch, but I jumped in this room because, I mean, this is kind of, this, this, this can be a solution to America's housing problem, which I think is super important. And for me, I just, I just got to get my eyes around and my mind around the zoning if there's any zoning issues in my my area but uh no i think um this is a great opportunity for people to uh to to provide housing for a lot of our aging um uh population that just so happens to own a a, a lot of the wealth if as a community we can provide housing affordably for the baby boomers maybe those baby boomers actually start to sell some of these houses and come off some of this inventory and we can start to fix some of this housing crisis so uh, love the topic of the room today, Lewis. Yo, that was so important. Yo, that bro. was so important, Go ahead, bro. Malachi. Go ahead, Malachi. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's a good point he mentioned with the with the regulations. Like here where we're in Houston, what makes it difficult is any structure like that you build, you gotta build two parking spots with it. So, you know, the zoning regulations play a big part in where it's allowed to be it's happening. And Malachi, uh, and Malachi, do you have to build two parking, uh, spaces, build two parking spaces for it, for it if it has a or foundation if as well. or if it's on wheels as well? Anything, anything that's a separate living unit uh, for somebody that's a separate structure uh, needs two spots. Now, Malachi, could that be a rock road or does it have to be asphalt? Uh, it can be either or. It just can't be. It just has to be on the lot itself. It can't be in the street. No worries, Michelle. He sound like he's not intimidated. He sound like he's not intimidated by that. So I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> Lewis, uh, Lewis, remember when you asked me if we could deliver to Jersey? What was what, yo, what did you say? Yo, he said, he said, <laughs> he said absolutely before I even finished the word Jersey, and I was like, <laughs> damn, that's too good. Like, <laughs> a lot of these companies that are building tiny homes have restrictions as far as where they can go and where they, where they can deliver. Um, so I'm I'm like abundantly excited. So um, so I'm gonna go to Richard and then I'm gonna tell you guys why I was like over the moon excited when Jeremy uh, to told Jersey. me yes ahead, uh, to Richard. Jersey. I don't know if you go ahead, Richard. I don't know if you got a chance to ask your question as of yet. Okay, I don't know if Rich is there. Okay, I don't know if Rich is there. Uh, Kirk the Bank Barnes, bro. What's up, man? I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna pull you right into now. this conversation oh, right now. Oh, Kirk, are you there? Hey, Lewis, what's hey, going on? I heard. Top, hey, bro, I heard Top Shots of Lounging to, is coming to New Jersey into a place near you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so let me tell you what's crazy, right? Uh, so, uh, Jeremy and I scheduled a call. Uh, and we started discussing the price points. He told me about the financing. He told me about everything. And then I said, okay, all right, that's that sounds cute. That sounds good. All right, cool. Uh, but can you do it in Jersey? He was like, hell yeah. Like, he, he just answered right away. And I said, let me tell you why, Jeremy. Because they just um, legalized um, recreational marijuana in Jersey. And he was like, uh-huh, okay, talk to me. What are you, what are you thinking? And I said, uh, Kirk the Bank Barnes and me, I've been uh, joking for over a year about creating a bud and out breakfast in out in New Jersey. And he's like, a what? Uh, I said a bud right. and breakfast, uh, right? Um, if you guys have never been to budandbreakfast.com, right? Uh, I'll pin the link up at the top of the room. Um, 
Oh, yo, yo, Onaji, pin, pin that, bro. bro. Pin that. Absolutely, bro. Um, <laughs> Onaji's got an uh, event coming up uh, this weekend on the 21st. Um, uh, uh, so, Onaji, go ahead and pin that up uh, to the link the of the room. Model uh, but the button breakfast charge. model allows you to charge up to, right, uh, or even more uh, sometimes, up to $350 per room that you're renting. Uh, the reason why this is exciting to me uh, is because because you're giving people a space to enjoy themselves and, and be 420 friendly, um, you're able to charge that 350 a room. Why is that so uh, important? Because we, talked about, uh, because we talked about these units costing $50,000. This is why this is advantageous. At $350 per night, right? Um, instead of $150 or $200 or $200 per per house or per Airbnb. apartment for Airbnb, at the button breakfast model at $350 per night. If you're doing it wrong and screwing up and only get half of your vacancy uh, occupied for a year or, or for a month, rather 14 days, that 350 uh, times the 14 days is uh, $4,900 times that by 12, you got $58,800. Your tiny house is paid off in one year. Mm. Sounds to me. Sounds to me like if you I mean, screw this up for one your year, your tiny house is paid off. Your tiny house is no paid off, payments. and you don't got no more monthly payments. And it was for on it. a ten-year plan. And it was so on a ten-year plan. An interest, so you save you yourself save an yourself interest. Payments, you save yourself in total payments. And you're making money. And you're making money. Foot. Hand over foot and building nothing but cash flow. So what does that allow you to do? That allows you to effectively run the same model. Since you paid one off, you go ahead and finance the next one (laughs) and just build yourself a tiny house community community operating on a butt and breakfast model. And then you can, you know, do Lollapalooza for all I give a damn. But there's nothing nothing but space, time and opportunity for people who are getting Uh, creative uh, to both build theme uh, housing, short-term rentals, uh, short-term uh, rentals uh, uh, transitional uh, housing, uh, transitional uh, housing, affordable housing, um, affordable guys, housing. The reason why we had to guys, have this, class today, have this, because this because class today is because this is nothing but space, time, and opportunity, nothing but space, time, and opportunity for us all. Um, Louis, can I say something? Go ahead, Kirk. So, so the other day I was in Arby's room, right? Even and we, like you said, we joke about it's like a year or so ago, right? And I was actually going to do that to my studio in New York. And I was like, I don't know, right? But, you know, Deontay Brooks is in her room and um, he does uh, the 420 BNB. Um, I think when, you know, they hear the butt and breakfast, a lot of people, it's not necessarily just just weed, right? Because I, I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, how am I going to get the scent out of the house? You know, what if, um, you know, we want other people that's going to come there? How is that going to work? We keep forgetting about edibles as well, oh. too. And so there's, oh. not, <laughs> there's not just necessarily just, you know, smokes. And then that that machine, that ozone machine as well, he brought that up. And, you know, I heard that machine works like, it works like a charm. The ozone machine, right? So I, I'm the, ozone not, machine, right? the ozone machine, yeah. I heard it, it works like a charm. I've never used it, but I heard it works like a charm. So that was another thing I was concerned about. Like, man, I don't want, you know, this place that's just, you know, smell crazy, but they're, they're also alternative. Not everybody have to necessarily blow it down. They can they can eat it. They can consume it that way as well too. So I, I think it's a great idea. I did have a conversation with Jeremy. Uh, I am supposed to hit him back. I just have not this short term rental thing, man. It's it's more hands on than people really think. It's not really just hey passive income. I ain't doing this down the third shoe. Sometimes hey, I got to clean the damn bathroom myself, right? If a cleaner don't show up, but um. It's it's uh it's uh it's absolutely a, a great idea and I, I think it it'll definitely work and it can definitely be lucrative. Hey Kirk, I think the reason why I haven't gotten a call back from you because we talked about Logify. Yeah, Drick, yeah. yeah. I think you and Drew side of that Logify thing, man. I, was, I don't know. Man. That's an that's an inside joke, guys. But no, that's uh yeah, Kirk, I can't wait to catch up with you, man. Hey Kirk, man, I'd be remiss, if I, be remiss uh, if I ain't mentioned this. Uh, Lion up, you got a hot mic, bro. Um, I'd be re- I'd be remiss if I ain't mentioned this. You spent fifty grand for a unit you did not own in Texas. Mm-hmm. You could have spent fifty grand. You could have spent fifty grand on a on a 
straight, like, yeah. straight cash too, man. That's the shit that hurt him. I'm just, uh, I'm just, <laughs> That's the shit that hurt you. Yo, just, you know what? I didn't even think about it like that. You're absolutely <laughs> wow. Yo, you're absolutely right, bro. True. You see what I'm Very saying? true. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Like, you see what I'm saying? Guys, like look, guys, I no knock look, I don't got no model. knock on the arbitrage model. However, like, however, Onazi always talks right? about. Onazi always and talks and about, always about, uh, about uh, him and I always joke about People, this. People are spending twenty five thousand to fifty thousand dollars to get units up and running that they don't so even own. Jeremy and I had so when Jeremy and I had this conversation about owning, about owning <laughs> container homes, <laughs> container homes set, right? that are fully set, right? Bedrooms, they could be one or two bedrooms, or whatever it is, tiny or owning on wheels, tiny houses take, on wheels that you could take wherever you want and do whatever you want with them, and flat out owning them for fifty thousand. <laughs> Right. Kirk, when I heard Kirk and his story and other people who are running the Airbnb models and the way and, and the amount of money that you, they're pouring in. You want to you want to know what the sad part is, Luis? I just had to spend a thousand dollars to move both units to a storage. Oh, oh bro. Come on, man. See, you see, you see, I don't, I don't know. If you, you see, feel I don't, I don't know if you guys Kirk feel the pain coming voice. through Kirk the Bang um, voice. Um, but when you do but, this right. When you right. do this you, right, proper right? planning when you, prevents piss proper poor performance. Prevents right. piss poor performance the right, the, fi- the six piece. Say that again, Lewis. Say that again. Yeah. Proper, planning, <laughs> proper prevents planning, prevents planning prevents piss poor performance. Prevents piss poor I'm performance. Just saying, I'm just saying. Throwing it out there for the team. Just it out there for the team. Um, so if you guys um, haven't gotten a chance, so if you guys haven't gotten uh, a chance to hit up Jeremy, uh, up Jeremy in the back channel, guys. I'm here creating opportunities. I'm here creating opportunities for everybody in this room. I want, to level guys to write I want you guys to write Jeremy in the back channel, back channel right? and tell him I'm ready. Right? Jeremy, people. we're going to make a we're list of these people. We're going to change this uh, and, nation and, and, and add some tiny house inventory, tiny to, house inventory uh, to this group uh, and to this nation overall. Uh, now, with that being or, said, bro, bro, Onaje, bro, you got an event bro, coming up this weekend, people, bro. Man. Talk to what? the people, man. What's happening? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Sorry, I'm at lunch. Uh, but yeah, we got game day in H Town. That's game day, uh, and what we're doing there is we're giving out the game. We're giving out a lot of game uh, on development, um, the best ways to getting started in real estate. We've got a great panel uh, just talking about all the different ways, and not just investing, but getting your first property, uh, wholesaling, lending, uh, being a realtor, being a broker, uh, insurance. So that'll be the best way to kind of get started because, you know, you want to build adjacencies in real estate. And then then we're going to talk to you, the people who want to level up. So if you're looking to figure out how to get into multifamily, maybe you got a couple units already, maybe you got a couple dollars and you want to get into multifamily, but don't necessarily know how to underwrite, don't know the terminology, don't know how to find deals. Uh, we're going to go over that as well. Um, but overall, it's a good networking event. Um, I call it game day, building your plan in your team, because real estate is a team sport. Um, and we got to have strong teams to be successful in real estate. I tried going at this alone for a long time. Um, I mean, I was successful, but nowhere near as successful as I could have been and where I'm at today, because I've got good, strong people around me helping me out um, along the way. So. That's what we got going on in Houston. I hope to see everybody uh, down if you can make it. If not, uh, we'll see you next time uh, as well. Appreciate it, Lewis. All day, bro. Talk All about day, a day bro. one, man. Talk about Onaze a day one, man. Onaze was literally with me from the first room, that I, the first room that I opened up. And here we are a year and a half later, later, bro. You've been rocking with the family the whole time, man. That's my brother from Houston, bro. Uh, if y'all haven't tapped in, if y'all haven't not chiming bugging into out, his man. event, you're you bugging out, man. You're going to lose you nothing but value. Half, you thought this last hour and a half, fire? two hours has been fire? Know, you don't even know, <laughs> man. <laughs> Sunday's going to be popping. So, um, so with that being uh, said, so, um, so hold on. There was somebody who wrote on the back making, channel. Are you making them out of high-Q uh, containers uh, when you speak of brand new or going di- are you going direct to manufacturers or uh, are these one-time use containers? Uh, Jeremy, you want to handle that one? What's up? No, these are uh, like brand new containers. I mean, we have our supply line, and so we've already commissioned our deals. Uh, when they say hot cube, I don't know exactly what they're referring to as far as a technical term. Um, but yeah, they're they're brand new containers. They're not. They haven't been sitting around for a while. That where we're going to rehab them or refurbish them. Um, they're brand new. They have been you know used mildly, but they have a strong intellectual uh, uh, structural integrity. So that way they can withhand with uh, withhold our 
withstand, I'm over here getting tongue tied, withstand any kind of strong mile hour wind um, that may come with storms. And then that way they're not having to have any holes in it by chance or, you know, they withstand rust as well. We make sure that we, uh, when we build them, we actually make sure that we, we have all the different places, uh, things in place to make sure that when it comes to any kind of like dings or damages or anything like that, it actually holds up against that and doesn't like have, you know, create a, uh, create a hole out of nowhere because of rust or any, anything that may happen when it comes to weather. Let me, Let me know if that didn't answer the question. I want to make sure I uh, I address it properly. Oh, yeah, yeah, most definitely. Oh yeah, 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 most um, definitely. So, um, my take, I think. so yeah. from my take, I think. Hey, Lewis, what's, I up? what's up, brother? What's up? What's up, brother? Hey, first of all, thanks for inviting me up. Hey, uh, Jeremy, um, the tiny homes once they're built and you set them on um, uh, foundations, if you're if you're placing them, um, what do you do about your 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 plumbing in terms of is it on public? service or is it on a septic how does that work it can be on both so that's where it just depends on what is the zoning for that plot of land and so we actually we work with you to make sure based on the zonings and what are those requirements um that's where we work together we'll serve as a quarterback but that goes into the you know, pouring the court, uh, concrete pad if you want us to, to supervise that we can but making sure that whether it's septic or if it's sewage, but electric and plumbing, I mean, uh, electric and water, you all that's uh, you know just uh, part of the standard uh, development uh, so we make sure that whether it's depending on where you're at uh, that way it's uh, it's parked right and everything's up to code. Oh, because we can put it on wheels or have the foundation that as well. Thank so you. there's different options. There's different things to do with that, with the, whichever okay. route you go. Yeah. So for the electrical, is this going to mean, because the sister's small, these could probably run on 60 amp service versus 100 amp, would you think? Yeah, we have them. Um, we have, as far as the servers, I need to double check as far as the actual voltage. But I know that we have different outlets in there that are 120 amp, 240 volt as well. Um, so I'll double check as far as the amperage, as far as the electrical on that as well. You know, make sure that when we connect, because I know that we are definitely due for a call. I'll make sure I have that answer when we uh, when we connect. I'll hit you on the back channel because I have some land. I'd be interested in, um, in in trying that concept, but I'll just continue to listen. But I'll hit you in the back channel. Thanks again. Sounds good. I went ahead and made a note for that. Hey, that's fire, man. Talking about hey, that's opportunity. fire, man. Talking about um, opportunity. You see, that's what um, luckiness is. You see, that's right? what luckiness is, know. right? I don't know. Luck if people is know. preparation. Luck is preparation. Meeting opportunity. That's luck. So we're creating luck. So we're creating all throughout luck. this room. All throughout uh, so look, guys. Uh, uh, so without look, any guys, further ado, uh, without any further ado, we are go ahead, Jeremy. Oh, go uh, ahead, Lewis, Jeremy. really quick. Um, Hardeep, she actually clarified. She said it was nine foot um, container. Yeah, so they're nine and a half foot uh, tall, eight and a half foot wide, and forty foot long. Boom! Got it! Got it! Got Boom. it! Got it! Got it! Got um, it! So, guys, um, I do have so to guys, jump on a call. I do it have to jump on a call. It is one sixteen minutes over. Our sixteen our minutes over. Time frame. Our expected uh, but with time that being frame, said, you uh, guys with that know being we said, are you guys a national know, podcast. We are a national I'm actually developing the website. I'm actually right developing the website right now. So it will probably be dropping by next week. Probably be dropping by next week. With that being said, and with that being said, we are here. We are here. Giving, giving, giving. We haven't asked you for a damn dime. Um, but we are asking you for little bits of pieces of your time because it's worth it, right? Uh, we will be back that, next we'll be week, talking Wednesday. About we'll be estate. talking about digital right. real estate. Uh, and, that com- right? uh, and that comes in many different uh, aspects. We'll be- uh, and we'll be chiming in. If you guys haven't so followed right the now, club, do so right now. Everyone deserves a home everyone club. Right deserves a home club. We right more than 11,000 members. More than 11,000 members, which is huge. Members, which um, is it, huge. Took some, um, it took us some time, but we're here, baby. <laughs> we live and direct. Feel free to follow um, each and every, one, follow of each each and every one of the moderators on this stage. Because they provide nothing but value. Every single place that they go. And because you guys wrote replay so much in the chat, we will have to run this room right here. And we'll be running it back soon. And we'll be running it back soon. I just coordinated. So that way we Jeremy, can set this tiny, uh, so that house, we can nation set this tiny house nation storm. and take it uh, so by storm. Said, uh, so with that being said, let's get some parting said, words, man. Let's get some parting words, man. Feel free to do some outros. Words, some outros. Let's, start let's start with Alicia. Go ahead. Let's start, start with Alicia. Go ahead. Start it, start it out. Okay, Miss Alicia might be away. Okay, Jeremy, man, tell the people where they can find you. Tell the people the link. The tinyhouseplug.com. What's up, bro? Plug.com. What's up, bro? Well, first of all, everyone, thank you for so much for giving your time today because you did not have to be here, and it has been it's been a uh, it's been a relief to be able to share with uh, with tiny homes and to be able to the most important thing is to lock arms with those who are on the same mission because this mission is too big I can't do it on my own and that's why I am partnering up with those who are called to those specific veins. Biggest thing is I can say is don't compare 
Don't worry about what other person to your left or to your right is doing. Focus on your own lane and focus on how you can become even better at it. Because at the end of the day, when we collaborate on what you're focused on, that ties right back to your purpose. It'll uh, give you joy. Hey, how about you? It'll strengthen you through the hard times hey, because that I'm is the truth. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And that's well, why when you do well. what you are, Give what you enjoy, the word literally second. means, enjoy means to, the prefix en means to be inside of. And when you are inside of joy every single day, doing what you love, it may feel illegal because you may have been doing something that you've been miserable, miserable about for the entire time. And so don't worry.